And it's time for West Georgia Wolves football here at University Stadium in Raylan Field as the West Georgia Wolves welcome in a top 10 opponent in the West Florida Argonauts' it's Gulf South Conference football here on Flow Sports, UWG Productions, and KISS 102.7. It's a pleasant good evening, everyone, and welcome in to our broadcast tonight alongside Willie Candler. I'm Matt Skinner. Thank you guys for joining us. We'll have Cade Perry in the third member of our broadcast crew joining us very shortly. Willie, what a tough loss it was last week to Mississippi College. The Choctaws came in here and upset uh, the then-ranked fifth West Georgia Wolves. Uh, three turnovers. It was the first time West Georgia has lost the turnover battle all season. Uh, two pretty bad interceptions by our, uh, our quarterback, Harrison Frost. But we're ready to hopefully get that behind us. you got to erase that from your mind. And the Wolves are trying to avoid their first back-to-back -back home losses since 2012. Yeah, Coach Dean said it best when he used the word complacency. And I think we, we executed to perfection in the first quarter, throwing three consecutive drives on offense. But give, hats off to Mississippi College. You know, they hung in there and they, they battled us the whole game and they came out and they took it from us at the end of the game. Yeah. So hats off to them. Their starting quarterback, Deontay Smith, got hurt there in the end of the second quarter. And uh, John Henry came in and he was on fire. And he did. we really, it was a spark and we really could not do anything. Even though Devontae Matthews had a career-high 12 tackles last it week. It is. It's the next man up mentality, and the Wolves are going to have to do that tonight with some of the players that we have. But he did a great job for Mississippi College, but looking forward to another good test today versus West Florida. Speaking of players that have to step up, it was Jackson Carson last week that stepped up. Zion Custis going out there in the second quarter with an ankle injury. Uh, last week, he had 100 yards rushing, the first 100-yard rusher this year for the Wolves. Jackson Carson's got to be big again tonight with now Rajez Mosley and, and Custis out this week. He is. Is, yeah, and I'm looking. He had a big game last week. I'd look for him to have another big game today, and he's going to have to carry the load for the Wolves in the rushing game tonight. And moving on to West Florida, they're led by their quarterback, Pee Wee Jarrett. He's a kid uh, that can spin it for West Florida in an offense that can put up over 500 yards a game. Yeah, and I think they're close to like they're 45 points a game as well. So I was watching him throw pregame, and he's a big body quarterback. He's got an NFL like arm, so it'll be a good test for our defense tonight. So West Georgia going to be coming out with uh, a couple of different guys that maybe you haven't seen before with some different injuries and some different situations that happened uh, from last week as the Wolves get ready and take the field. The coin toss has happened, and now we're getting ready for some West Georgia Wolves football. It's a top 15 matchup here tonight at University Stadium and Ray Lynn Field right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we'll have open to kick and much, much more right after this. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I wanna be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia.
and welcome back in to University Stadium in Rayland Field on the campus of the University of West Georgia. There you see the head man of the West Georgia Wolves, Coach David Dean, who is leading this team and hopefully a big top 15 matchup win tonight, Willie. Yeah, we gotta have a bounce back week after last week upset against Mississippi College. They've got a tough test in front of them with West Florida. They're one of the top offenses in the nation, uh, averaging around 45 points a game, pitting, putting up 500 yards per game. And what better way to bounce back than beating West Florida at home? We'll get to Pete Shinnick in just a moment. But first, Brock Pellegrino going to put total leather for us. Uh, West Georgian red helmets, blue tops, white bottoms, a lot wearing blue leggings. And West Florida wearing navy pants with navy. Look like the, look like the uh, Dallas Cowboys out there almost. They do. As they uh, take the kick from the one yard line and they get it up from the 15 to the 20 and he's tackled there by Jacob Pinch on the return for West Florida. Number 10 uh, looks like Isaiah Harris. So they got double numbers. So we'll have to keep an eye out on that. And here we go with Byron Jarrett, Byron Pee Wee Jarrett. We'll call him Pee Wee. That's what they want him to be called. So he will take over this high powered West Florida offense. Well, his, ma his name might be Pee Wee, but he is not a small quarterback. He's 6'3", 245. He's got a huge arm, NFL like talent. And hopefully he doesn't carve us up too much today. We'll have to see. First and 10 for the Argonauts at their own 20 yard line. Running back right beside him, we'll take it. And we get them right after about a two-yard game. We come up and hit them hard. Deontay Overstreet, along with uh, that's Amos Don, the linebacker, getting the, the hit. That was uh, Key Wetzel, uh, or excuse me, number five on the carry, uh, Shamari Mason, the starting running back for the Argonauts. Yeah, this is going to be a great test for our defense for this game. We were tested on the ground with the triple option last week, but this is really an air raid run in a uh, good running offense from the gun so it'll be a good test for them defensively today they are huge across the front we got four down or three down linemen and an edge mason beside uh peewee he's going to throw it out near the first down marker and it's incomplete uh, the intended receiver out there was number nine that's jared smith and it's going to bring up a third and long exactly where we want to have them. Yeah, like I said, I mean, that was almost a, that was about a 10-yard throw to the opposite hash on a line. This guy's got yeah. a big arm for a quarterback. Jarrett coming back over. He's just a junior, six foot three, 245 pounds. Wolves going to try to get off the field right here on third and eight. Mason beside uh, Jarrett. Two receivers to each side. Now we go press coverage on the corners with Kamai and Fagans and Robert Carter. Takes the snap, three-step drop. Going to try to throw a screen out there. It's caught in the slot, and we're going to tackle back at the 19, maybe the 20-yard line. A loss of three on the play. Big play there by the Wolves defense. Devontae Matthews in there along with Deontay Overstreet. Good pursuit by the Wolves, and it's fourth down punting time. Yeah, they did. They didn't bite on the fake with the, the quarterback's eyes headed to the right side, throw back over to the left, and good job by our defense staying home and forcing a three and out for the... West Georgia Wolves. Jalen Lee got the initial hit as well. Fourth and 11 and time to punt it away for the Argonauts gonna be number 12, Steve Dawson. They go with a spread punt look. They do some shifting. They bring another man in motion. They're all sorts of motions on punts. I hate that so much. <laughs> Good snap. We try to come off and block it with Javen West. Can't do it. This one almost straight up the elevator shaft and Ronnie Blackman makes the catch at our own 49 yard line. A great job by Ronnie. And we will set up shot right there, Willie, and you'll get your first look at the Wolves offense and Harrison Frost. Yeah, good field position to start for Harrison Frost and look for him to have a little bit of a bounce back game with those two red zone turnovers last week. He's confident. I talked to his quarterback coach this week and had a good week of practice. So look for him to get back to the Harrison Frost we know and love. First and 10 for the Wolves, they'll come out with the West Georgia Wolves offense. And here's coach David Dean. Coach 12 All-Americans here, along with Valdosta State as well in his tenure. 
We go stack receivers to both sides. Jackson Carson, the running back, playing with that broken finger on one of his hands. He's at the 50 up to the 47 yard line. Again, a six, first or second and four, Willie. We'll take six yards a pop with Jackson. Yeah, he's going to have to have a big game and a, carry a big load for the offense tonight. He's a patient runner. Great job on first down, getting about five yards or six for us with the second and five now. We bring in Trey Williams, who caught his first career college touchdown last week at the H back. We'll give it to Carson, left side. Nice hole, 40, 35, 33, 32 yard line. Jackson Carson, another big gain. First down, West Georgia. Yeah, I like that play call right there. They had overload to the right side. Their defense was shifted over and they had a big opening to the left and good run to get first down for the Wolves. We go three receivers to the right. That's Perry on Perry, Terrell Cole and Marquise Bridges. We go a tight end. Is that Yost? I don't think that's Yost. I'm having a hard time seeing that's 87. We'll come back to that in a second. It's Jackson Carson again up to the 30 yard line. And on the stop, that's actually, uh, that is Yost. Yost is 87. We get a gain of three on the play. Yost will come out. Here comes Trey Williams in. A couple of Argonauts in on the stop. Second and seven, Willie. Yeah, again, positive yards on first down. That's what you want here. Pretty good drive to start the game. Let's see if we can end up with some points. Frost takes the snap, throws out here to receiver, in and out of the hands of Marquise Bridges. Could not get it. And it's going to be third down and about seven. Yeah, we had stack receivers to the right side with LP at the front, initially running off the guard or the cornerback, and we had a little out route behind him. And pretty good throw there by Harrison Frost. They got to bring that in if we're. And and looking back at that UWG production instant replay, we're also lucky it didn't get intercepted by the backside safety after it tipped off the hands of Marquise Bridges. Third and seven, Frost, three-step, throws it, and it is incomplete, intended for Terrell Cole. Good pressure by the Argonauts. That's number three, Willie Jordan, who came in on a linebacker blitz. Also number 45, Aiden Sweat. Yeah, it looks like we're gonna go for it here on fourth down, but pretty good protection right there. Looks like our receiver fell down on the route, the initial route. So Coach Dean being aggressive to start the game. Let's see if we try to get him to draw off side. It would be about a 47 yard field goal for where we for where we lie. We're on the 30 yard line with 11.52 left to go here in quarter number one. For us, we're going for it. Looking across the middle, incomplete intended for Terrell Cole. We're gonna we're get gonna late have hit. Rough in the passer. Yep. Awesome. We're gonna get a rough in the passer call. I believe Harrison Frost got hit a little late. We can follow it up on the UWG Productions instant replay, but I will bet it that it is indeed a late hit. Personal foul. Roughing the passer, defense number three. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Yeah, big break there for the Wolves with the incomplete pass, but with the roughing the pass, so that'll bring us some first down. And that was one of the talking points for the coaches this week is we're going to have to have some receivers step up and make some plays. And West Florida's challenging us early and haven't been able to succeed yet, but we're going to need some plays from our wideouts this game. One of those receivers just came in the ball game, Steven Peterson, the top man slot side. We'll throw a screen out here to T. Cole. He'll catch it at the 13, get up inside the 10 to the nine yard line. A good pitching catch right there from Harrison Frost to Terrell Cole, a gain of six. Yeah, we call that just a quick hitter, fast screen out to the left side, short side of the field for five yards on first down. We can live by that as an offense. Yeah, it is a long five, so we'll say uh, second and five, second and four and a half as the ball touches the 10 yard line here. We got a receiver out to the right, LaPerry on Perry, one receiver to the left. We got tight end Trey Williams and tight end Mason Yost in the game. We'll hand it Jackson Carson right side, down inside the 10 to the eight to the seven yard line. A gain of about three, it'll bring up third and a manageable two. Yeah, outside zone, stretch play, run play to the right side there. Third and manageable here for the Wolves. Let's see what we dial up. Coach Ten, Dean does. 10.52, 10.51, 10.50 on a first quarter clock. We go a lot of tight here. Big set, Trey Williams in there, Mason Yost in there. We're gonna hand it to Jack, no, throw it out here to Trey Williams at the 10, he's at the five, and he gets on West Georgia first down at the four yard line. Great play design there, Willie. We yep. get it to Trey Williams out in space. Yeah, I like that. It looked like they took a little bit of a book from Mississippi College there, had a couple running backs in the backfield, the fake motion across his face, and had a fullback out in the flat. Good play on for, to get a first down for the Wolves. West Georgia rolling here on this first drive. 
Let's hope we can capitalize and finish the drive off here. We're at the four yard line, receiver to each side, tight end look. We'll hand it to Jackson Carson up the middle. Touchdown, West Georgia. What a drive by the Wolves. Seven plays, 45 yards, just over three minutes, or actually nine plays, at re my stats refresh, nine plays, 53 yards, three minutes for a West Georgia touchdown. How about the Wolves on yeah, that drive? Yeah, I love that. After the tough loss last week to come out as an offense and make a statement on their first drive, big Big play, big drive, scoring drive for the Wolves. Way to start the game. Started the exact same way we started last week. A nine-play touchdown drive. Brock Pellegrini, Brock Pellegrino going to try to put up the extra points. Skinner's snap is good. Hogan's hold is good. Kick looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field with 10-11 to play here in quarter number one. The West Georgia Wolves lead the West Florida Argonauts 7-0. We'll be back for more right here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7 right after this. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans. West Georgia Wolves take a 7-0 lead with 10 minutes to go, 10 minutes and 11 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Pellegrino will kick it off for the Wolves. We're going to join the uh, third member of our broadcast crew, Kate Perry, on the sideline as soon as we hope to have a touchback here for Mr. Pellegrino. Back deep to receive is number 10, Isaiah Harris. Harris will take it from the one yard line. He dropped it, picked it back up at the two. He's at the 10, he's at the 15, 20, 25, hurdles a man at the 26 and gets out to the 28 yard line before he's brought down by number 13, Tay Huff. Okay, let's go down to you. What say you, my friend? What a great drive to start. How about that offensive touchdown? I mean, we needed that. We needed that really bad after last week. You know, offensively and defensively last week, we were frustrated on both sides of the ball. I can especially say the defense was frustrated. Talking to Coach Nate Masters. Offside, kicking team number 18. Five-yard penalty will be added to the end of the return. First down. I did not cause that penalty, guys. <laughs> Ta talking to defensive coordinator Nate Masters before the game. He did say that this will be the most athletic offense we see this season. So... Buckle up, boys. Buckle up indeed. They got negative one yards on the first drive. Let's hope to have it here. Shamari Mason gets it, and Keith Harris says, you shall not pass after a gain of one. Yeah, that's speed right there by Keith Harris. They had an outside zone run to the left side, and Keith was just there to meet him and picked him up and dump truck, as we call it. Great <laughs> tackle by Keith Harris. By the way, you can call offsides on every single kickoff yeah. of all time. Here's Pete Shinnick 
coached four players with all Gold South Conference honors a year ago, including Austin Reed, who is lighting it up at Western Kentucky right yeah, now. Yeah, he's had a Transfer. bunch of good quarterbacks. He's got a, uh, Mike Beaudry. He's in the CFL. He was one of their national champion quarterbacks, and he's got a good group of guys. Jarrett to pass across the middle, complete to a receiver across midfield up to the 40, 35, and we finally bring him down at the 31-yard line. Nice pitch and catch there from West Florida's uh, Byron Jarrett to David Durden. David Durden, one of their top receivers. Yeah, that looked like a Jake DeGrom fastball right there from the backfield on a deep dig route. Looks like a 15-yard dig route by their receiver. And big play for West Florida on, to get first, first down. We gotta wait on the Jacob DeGrom references till next year. That's right. When he's That's a right. When he's a brave. We'll, we'll keep with the Spencer Strider the, references. The Strider fastball. Yeah. First and ten. Looking to pass is Jared. He's got a lot of time to throw, and he throws this one 20 yards behind the back of the end zone. Durden's looking for both both the offensive and defensive guy want to pass interference on each other right there. <laughs> Said that ball was so far out of bounds, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that ball was thrown a country mile. mile. Oh my gosh. What a throw by uh, Pee Wee Jarrett there. That looks like Cade when he's trying to dial in a wedge from <laughs> 15 yards. He's starting early this week. Second and 10, ball in the 32 yard line. Shamari Mason beside Jarrett. And they'll fake it to him, looking to pass. A uh, nice out route, just a little high. He was open. Devontae Matthews in coverage. They were looking to try to get it to number 16, Larry Wimbert, Rimbert, and it is third and 10. Yeah, when I was watching Pee Wee Jarrett, the quarterback for West Florida, warm up, he's got a different arm slot. It's a little more uh, kind of a three fours. It's not straight over the top. So right there, he didn't have his feet set. Arm looked a little low, and that ball sailed on him on the deep out route. So look for that to see if that carries on over the course of this game. Willie, we bring in Jalen Shepard as an extra defensive back, so we got six DBs out there. Deontay Overstreet is set up as a, kind of an inside linebacker for us on this formation. We'll see if we're, we're showing pressure. We'll see what we do. We have five. They bring a man in motion inside. Jarrett looking to pass. He'll step up in the pocket. We can't get him. He'll get to the 25, near the 20. Deontay Overstreet hit him right at the first down marker. He's going to be about a half a yard short of that spot. It's third down at the 23. They got to get to the 22 and one third line. Yeah, fourth down. Allen Johnson's almost got his hands on him in the pocket, but nice play by Pee Wee to get some positive yards, and they're going to go for it here. Yeah, I think you definitely go for it. You need, if you've got a 245 pound quarterback, why not run him again? Yeah, I'd be keeping it in his hands, just power on. Let's but see, what they dial up. For us, luckily, they snap the ball. They're going to snap the ball six yards back with eight minutes to go on a first quarter clock. Big, big opportunity here for the Wolves defense. Snap, hands to Mason up the middle, and he got it up to the 20-yard line. Good hard run by the Argonauts. First down, West Georgia. Both guys, we got a lot of chippiness in this game, and if you can recall again last year down at their place, it was probably the chippiest game of the year. Yeah, this is just a heated rivalry. This is the seventh meeting between the two programs now with the – uh, it's just it's a great rivalry. GSC, that's what you want on a Saturday night. Yeah, everybody that bought their Flow Sports subscriptions tonight getting their money's worth. Everybody listening on KISS always gets their money's worth. First and ten, the quarterback, Pee Wee Jarrett, got Mason beside him, has not left him this entire ball game. Receiver to the right, two receivers down to the left side. They'll fake it. Throwing deep, got a man open, and good defense by Devontae Matthews, who's, who was beat initially and did not push him. He played good face guarding defense, and it, we'll live to see another down second and 10. He did, so that was a slot fade route right there by West Florida. And great job by our defender just keeping his hands up and didn't turn to run into the, the offensive receiver. Good job, good defense, forcing second down. Second and 10, 7-12 to go first quarter. West Georgia up 7-10, to 10, but West Florida's in the red zone for the first time tonight. They got an H back, two receivers to the left, one to the right. Quarterback follow play, power run up the middle, 10, 5, inside the 5, down to the 3-yard line. Good hard run by Byron Jarrett. Yeah, he's a big boy, 6'3", 245 again, and he's going to be a load to bring down tonight. 
Are you, were you happy with your frame, or would you like to be 6'3", 245? I think I would like to be 6'3", maybe not 245, maybe like 220, <laughs> a little more. 6'50 to go? Yeah, quicker. Here in the first quarter, Wolves save a touchdown. It was Keith Harris that did. A receiver to each side, double tight end look. They'll run it up the middle with a, a new running back in the ball game. He's fighting right at the goal line. They're going to say he is marked short of the first down marker. Looked like number 21, C.J. Wilson, got the carry. It was number indeed C.J. Wilson, Wilson who got the carry. On the carry for West Florida. It'll be second and goal from just inside the one-yard line. Tackle was made. If, if I'm West Florida, I'm just I'm just keeping it in Pee Wee's hands and running that power play again. I mean that's that's hard to stop. 6:05 on the first quarter clock. West Georgia up seven nothing. They'll hand it off up the middle and he gets in touchdown West Florida. C.J. Wilson, the junior from a yard out with 5:59 to go. West Florida does what a good team does. They answer with a 10 play 67 yard drive in just over four minutes and they add a score of their own at seven to six. Yeah, it's gonna be a dog fight tonight. West Florida had a huge push right there from their monster O line. And again, it's gonna be a great test for West Georgia's defense. PAT will be kicked by Griffin Serra. The holder is Steve Dawson. Long snapper is Wyatt Adams. The kick is up and it looks good because it is good. Good kick by Griffin Serra. Well, West Georgia got a stop on their first defensive series. They didn't score. And then West Florida answers with a score of their own. With 5.59 to go, we got a tie ball game at 7. We'll be back for more on the UWG Productions and KISS 102.7 right after this. Sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app and get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting at no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown, fast scans, happy fans. Welcome back into UWG Productions, KISS 102.7. This right here, this live drone shot is courtesy of UWG's Department of Digital Experiences out of the School of Communication, Film, and Media. The school offers bachelor's degrees in film and video production, mass communications. They also have a brand new master's degree in digital and social media communication. Students can get involved with any of the school's award-winning uh, experimental labs too. UWG Productions, Blue Stone, Public Relations, Digital Experiences, SCFM Productions, the West Georgia Newspaper, Wolf Radio, and WUTV. Check out the school to start your career in communication, film, and media. West Florida answer with a good drive of their own. Willie, 10 plays, 67 yards, and we have a tie ball game, seven apiece with 5.59 to go. They'll kick it off deep. Ronnie Blackman awaits at the five-yard line. He'll take it there, 15 up to the 20, runs right into a couple of West Florida defenders. In on the start, stop, Dem uh, Demarie Gibbons and Jared, or we'll go with Kelvin Johnson, the linebacker up to the 22-yard line, and West Georgia will try to repeat what they did on their first offensive possession. 
And looking ahead now to the last matchup, or, or the series history, I should say. We've mentioned it a little bit in the pregame. Three and three all time. Last year, West Georgia went down to West Florida and pulled off the number one, or a big upset of number one, West Florida. And then West Florida went on to win the rest of their games and get upset in the first round of the playoffs. That's right. The home to Newberry, right? I believe it's Newberry. Newberry. The home team has never won this yeah. game. Crazy. We give it to Jackson Carson up the middle. 27, 28 yard line. We are showing a determination to run the football early in this one. I like it, Willie. A gain of six on first down. Yeah, we're setting the tone with the run game to start. Uh, that was what it was working on the first drive and look for them to have more of that here on the second. Second down and four to go. Ball on the 28-yard line, 526 to go on the first quarter clock. West Georgia in the lead. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. Trey Williams, our tight end, will throw it across the middle. Complete to Terrell Cole, and he'll slide down to the 41-yard line. Terrell Cole, probably his biggest game of the year last year, came against the same West Florida Argonaut squad. A pick up a 13 and a first down West Georgia. Yeah, good pitch and cast from Harrison Frost here to Terrell Cole. Just a little bit of a 10-yard in route there by Terrell. Threw it right behind the linebacker's helmet. Great pitch and catch to get a first down for the Wolves. That's actually Ian Hinkle now in the ball game. We go pistol look, receivers to each side, two on the right, one to the left. Carson, the running back, he'll now signal him beside him. We'll hand it to Carson, left side to the 45. He got his face mask ripped at about the 47. No call up to the midfield. A gain of nine. It's second and one. Yeah, for a big frame running back, he's got a great way of maneuvering his body to avoid the hit. A safety came in there for a big shot, and he's able to sidestep it here on the replay. Yeah, oh. ducks under there and makes a good run on first down. Yeah, nice face mask tackle by Willie Jordan on our UWG Productions instant replay second and one 420 to go first quarter we bring a man inside motion that's zay Britt. we'll hand it to carson again right side he just plows over a whippy tackler across midfield to the 47 yard line another west georgia first down yeah great physical run there and he also had Kyrie jones engaged with that defender and those are two big bodies <laughs> running at you if you're a defender west florida moving in and moving out a lot of different bodies trying to get three or four guys out there that can try to stop this running game. Kate Perrin, you're exactly right. This team is huge. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. We look to run again, an outside stretch play with Carson to the 45. He gets across to the 44-yard line. Good hard run by Jackson Carson, who is picking up a lot of yards already here in the first half. He is already up to nine carries. Yeah, carrying the load. I mean, he's got to have a big game if the West Georgia offense is going to be successful. It starts with the run game, and then they can work in the play-action pass behind it. Now we go in with Darius Clark. The senior from Kennesaw, Harrison Frost's high school teammate at Harrison High School. Second and seven. We'll hand to Frost left side and can't get nothing. How in the world did he squirm out of the first two tacklers? We were lucky to only lose the one yard. Good defense by the Argonauts. First man on the scene of the crime was Jer or was Kelvin Johnson, the graduate transfer. Yeah, tough play there. It looked like West Florida brought a delayed blitz. And the linebacker did a great job of shooting through the gap, which blew up that run play there, forcing third and down, third and long for the Wolves. Kelvin Johnson, the senior out of Griffin, Georgia, Spalding High School, third and nine. Frost, a lot of time to throw. Coming back, Terrell Cole, interference, P.I. Third and nine, Wolves go for a deep shot with Terrell Cole, and they pushed him down in coverage for the Argonauts. Trying to get a number is number eight, Sherrod Oliver. Pass interference, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And Pete Shinnick is trying to uh, prove a point to this official. He needs to get back in the box, but he also needs to realize you got to let the receiver come back to the ball. It was a little bit underthrown by Harrison Frost. It was. And, uh, I like it, though. It was a one-on-one oh, yeah. on one matchup, and give your guy a chance, and usually you get a call like that. Yeah, the only part of the field with any sun on it right <laughs> now, too. We get it. The Darius Clark up the middle, Ooh. and going nowhere is Clark. Great play by, my goodness, big 98, Dante Johnson, the six foot five, 315-pound graduate out of Apopka, Florida. Second and 10 for the Wolves. Carson back in for Darius Clark. Second down and 10. 
you, I have a feeling you're going to see a lot of Jackson Carson in this game. Two receivers to each side. Frost looking complete to Steven Peterson at the 25-yard line. And that's exactly where they'll put it. A good pitch and catch of six yards. And it'll bring up third and manageable for the Wolves. Yeah, Steven lined up there in the slot, ran a five-yard out route. Good job of getting some positive plays on second down, getting us to a third and manageable here. So not only do you have Steven Peterson, a high school teammate of uh, Harrison Frost, you also have Darius Clark, a lot of Harrison high school connect, uh, connections on this team. Third and four, big play for the Wolves. 150 to go first quarter. We're at a 7-7 ball game. Trips to the left, one to the right. Frost, a lot of time, got a man. End zone, Terrell Cole and just could not track the football in coverage was Brandon Cross and it's third or it's fourth down and will the Wolves kick a field goal or will they go for it? No, it looks like we're going to go for it again. That, again, that was just a corner route there for Terrell Cole. Looked like he turned the wrong yeah. the wrong way. I'm not sure why he wasn't facing out to the outside shoulder there. but We also threw it right in the sun again. Yeah. It's so hard <laughs> for T. Cole to look back into the sun with the football coming. So West Georgia subs, and now West Florida's trying to get their subs together. They run a man on, now they run a man off. They yeah. about had 12 on the field there. Yeah, they're in man coverage here. Looks yeah. like they're going to bring some pressure. Play clock at two. We snap it. Frost looking. Got a man. Ronnie Blackman in zone. In and out of the hands of Ronnie Blackman. He wanted P.I. not going to get it. Good defense as that was uh, in coverage. Brandon Cross again. He got beat, and that ball just hung up there. It felt like for an eternity. We couldn't get it in, the wolf, and the Wolves turned the ball over on down. Yeah, I think Harrison would like to have the ball back. A touch under thrown there, and if he would have had another two or three feet on the throw, I think we would have been had six points right there. First and 10 for West Florida taking over on their own 25 yard line. So unfortunately, a tough break for the Wolves on offense. Now the defense got to come out and find a way to make a play. They'll go with a new running back. This is uh, Ravion Hargrove. They send two receivers to the right, one to the left and an H back right. Jarrett to pass across the middle, intercepted, intercepted, intercepted. Jalen Lee intercepted the ball. Jalen Lee cut off the receiver right there at the 40 yard line, first down West Georgia. What a play there and Reed by Jalen Reed just jumped inside of the receiver on the in route. Great job of looking at the quarterback's eyes and big play there for the Wolves defense. Gotta love it. Just what the doctor ordered for the Wolves after a stalling drive of nine plays, 53 yards. The Wolves answer with a great play on defense, first and 10 from the 40 yard line. Yeah, they're gonna be tested all night in the passing game with the, uh, the dominant offense of West Florida. And great job by our secondary. Seems like the juice, Cade, has gotten back in a little bit for this team. The mojo is on the sidelines, boy. <laughs> it's not just me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> We'll go with two, uh, two receivers to the right. Deep shot, looking for Marquise Bridges, and nothing doing. Taking a lot of deep shots. Yeah. Second and it, ten. Well, it looks like West Florida is going to challenge our receivers in one-on-one -on -one man coverage. So we've got to take those shots to get us to respect us in the passing game. And here's the here's the uh, UWG production instant replay. Jalen D. What a job to cut off the receiver right there number 85 nate howard yeah the receiver threw his hands up like he wanted a pass interference that's just great defense right there he's from lando lakes florida do they have the lakes receiver. do they have lakes there yeah i guess so second and ten we'll fake it to clark throw it out here to tay huff and it's incomplete tried to throw a quick out as willie would say to our, our man tay huff and might be best he didn't catch the ball, to be honest, Willie, because two West Florida Argonauts were there to to hit him for maybe a loss. Yeah, I don't, that might have been a pre-snap read based on the play-action fake. And, man, our running game's doing so well on first and second down. You know, I'd, I'd keep going with them. Trips to the left, Zyre Wilson, Tay Huff, and Steven Peterson. We have down here Zay Britt. Jackson Carson, the running back, they'll rush four. Plenty of time to throw. Tay Huff makes the catch at the 32. Spin move, gets a first down at the 30-yard line. What a play. Tay Huff just sat down right at the 32-yard line. 
and he was able to do enough and get a first down. Yeah, we call that a spot route outside towards the West Florida sideline. Good job of Harrison Frost looking right, middle, left, finding Tay Huff, and good job by Tay getting to the sticks for a first down. Look at that camera work, guys. Great work. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. We'll throw a quick out to Zay Britt. Nothing doing. We didn't block anybody. Great play by Anthony Johnson, Jr., the, so the sophomore from Miami Northland High School. Second and 12, a loss of two for the Wolves with 38 seconds to go first quarter. Wolves will have to run at least one more play here in quarter number one. We'll go too tight now with Mason Yost and uh, Ian Hinkle. Zyre Wilson out of Buford up high. Zay Britt, or that's, uh, yeah, Zay Britt down here to our right. Jackson Carson, the running back. Calling the signal out, Frost. Going to throw, he's got Zyre Wilson, and we got a flag, and it's a false start. Wolves shot themselves in the foot there. False start, offense, number 82. Five-yard penalty, still second down. So a penalty on Ian Hinkle, the tight end. Yeah, that's not what you want there. We're going in reverse. <laughs> We're going in the wrong direction. So we go with Tay Huff now in the ball game who replaces Hinkle. We'll go two receivers to the left, one to the right. Tight right with Mason Yost. Second and about 18. We'll fake it to Carson. We're going to throw. He's, He's all over our receiver and nothing. David Dean is not happy, and I don't know why. Uh, we didn't see a flag there. Zay Britt couldn't even put his arms up to try to catch the ball. Good physical play by Anthony Johnson Jr. Hey, if they're going to let you be as physical as that, might as well. Yeah, that's a terrible call. I know I'm not one to talk too, too poorly about the refs, but he had him. He was draped all over our receiver there. That should have been a P.I. and first down for the Wolves. He was def definitely blanketed there. Wolves got to get to the 20 for a first down. It's third and 17. Ball at the 37-yard line. Frost across the middle. Steven Peterson, the catch inside the 10, down to the 5-yard line. First down, West Georgia. Yeah, big play there. Vertical route by Steven right up the middle, and what a ball by Harrison Frost. A little bit of a back shoulder, put it on the money. Big play for the Wolves, first and goal. And that'll do it for the first quarter. What a way to end it. West Georgia on a great drive right now. That will end the end of the first quarter, a 32-yard connection down to the five-yard line. Wolves on a six-play, 35-yard drive. They'll try to cut it when we come back. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I wanna be around people who will support me, appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Verida is a national non-emergency medical transportation management company headquartered in Villa Rica, managing the transportation of Medicaid members to their medical appointments. With a keen focus on care, Verida uses best-in-class call centers, business operations, and technology services to meet the needs of members. Verida is partnering with the University of West Georgia to offer call center training, career development, and leadership development tracks that allow employees to advance in their careers. Our program is open to the West Georgia community. Verida is a proud supporter and sponsor of UWG Athletics. Go Wolves! With over 25 years real estate experience, we dedicate ourselves to doing business the right way all the time. Hi, I'm Tony Tritt, co-owner of Tritt Realty, a premier real estate broker serving Georgia and Alabama. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a seasoned investor or builder, or maybe you're relocating to our area to embark on a new opportunity, we want to lock arms and guide you seamlessly through the entire real estate process from start to finish. We want to become your lifetime real estate partner. Find us online at trittrealty.com or come on by our office in downtown Carrollton and get started today. Kevin, 
Meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. You're looking live at the sound that lights the south. First down and goal for West Georgia at the five. We'll hand to Jackson Carson right side and can't get anything going. Good stop by the Argonauts of West Florida. It'll be second and goal from the six. West Georgia on a great drive after the 32 yard completion from Harrison Frost to Steven Peterson. Let's go down to the third member of our sideline crew. And Cade Perry, and what say you, sir? I know y'all saw all the replays on that pass interference that wasn't called. Let's just say Coach David Dean didn't have anything nice to say to the officials <laughs> down here on the sidelines. 14-25 to go, second quarter. Wolves and uh, Wildcat, Jackson Carson, the lone uh, quarterback. He's got Ian Hinkle. He'll bring him in motion. Carson, right side, gets put uh, up. Right side, touchdown! He hit in behind the big right tackle, Kyle. Kyrie Jones and scoot it in for a West Georgia touchdown. Yeah, I like the play call there by West Georgia. Coach Dean's staff direct snap to Jackson, and he did a great job of hiding behind that right tackle, got north quick, and got in the end zone. Great play by the Wolves. What a drive once again for West Georgia. Eight plays, 40 yards, took a little over two minutes off the clock. 14-13 to go in second quarter action, and the Wolves lead 13-7. Skinner to snap it. It'll be Pate Hogan to hold it, and Brock Pellegrino will try to kick it through. Snap, hold, kick is up. It looks good because and it is good. Play. Jackson Carson, have yourself a game here on UWG Productions. Look at this play, Willie. Yeah, right behind, yeah, ducks his shoulder, gets <laughs> in behind 72 Kyrie and gets into the end zone for the Wolves. Love to see it. Great job right there by the offensive line and the Wolves offense. Wolves lead 14 to seven. Timeout back after this. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions and we're gonna show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups. And over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm gonna send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our net sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our camera's feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions YouTube page. Bye. <laughs> Back here on UWG Productions, everybody, alongside Willie Candler, Kate Perry, and down on the sideline. 14-13 to go, second quarter. It's 14-7, to West Georgia leads. How about the great work by all the students? I mean, we get a new camera in the booth we this do. week. How about and it? You guys, Innovated. You guys are getting a chance to see some really good work 
uh, here at the University of West Georgia. We are blessed with all the we work are. that we've been able to see so far. And it's been a good ball game tonight. It has. The Wolves have done what they needed to do, and it's going to be a ball game. End over end kick by Brock Pellegrino and is taken at the 10-yard line by number 10. Isaiah Harris out to the left, up to the 35-yard line, and he'll be marked down at the 36. And Harris is a little slow to get up, and we'll see what the Wolves can do. Now on defense, Jalen Lee, he had a pretty good uh, play right after a, a Wolves turnover on downs. Jalen Lee got it right back. He did, and that's we're going to have to make some more of those plays throughout the course of this game as a defense, man. That's a big play. And leads to six, seven points for the Wolves. So 14 to seven, West Georgia leads over West Florida. First and 10, Pee Wee Jarrett, the quarterback. And that's uh, Mason beside him. He'll give it to him right side. He'll cut up. He's at the 40, 41, 42 yard line. Good blocking by that big offensive line. Kate Perrin, you, you talked about it, but this offensive line for West Florida is ginormous. So is Pee Wee the quarterback. <laughs> The, the, looking at their offensive line, they average, according to their uh, their two deep, they only average 295. I, I'd say they average well well over 300. Yeah, big <laughs> big 67. Their right tackle. I'm not going to try to pronounce his name, but he's 6'4", 350. That's a big boy. Goodness gracious. Second and four. After the run by uh, Rivon Hargrove, we get another one here up to the 50, cross midfield to the 46-yard line, and now West Florida starting to run the ball a little bit with Ravion Hargrove. Yeah, he's got some speed to him. Shot through the initial line of scrimmage, and good run for him on first on second down to get first down for the West Florida Argonauts. First and 10, ball at the 46-yard line with 13 minutes to go here in the second quarter. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, an H back on the right, and I believe that's uh, Mason, and that's uh, still Hargrove in at running back. Pee Wee gonna throw out here and scooped up and caught down on a knee by David Durden, the slot receiver. He caught that on two knees after a gain of five. Yeah, dangerous throw out here to the long side of the field. A little bit of a hesitation right there. And if the Wolves can read that initially, they can jump in front of that, create a big play. That was a long throw, yeah, wasn't it? It My was. Goodness. You don't want to hesitate. It's all about timing on those short, pat or those short routes outside. And he was late, but luckily we didn't break on it quick enough. Jacoby Quillen is the top receiver to the left. One receiver down to the right is Caden Leggett. They bring a man in motion, that's Durden. They'll hand it to Hargrove left side and we don't have anybody there. 35, 30, we finally run him down. Devontae Matthews inside the 30 to the 27. He got to uh, get about seven, eight yards without anybody coming anywhere close to him. And we finally bring him down. Devontae Matthews inside to the 27 yard line. First down West Florida. I mean, talk about a push from the, their left side of the oh, line. Man. Just created a wall for their yeah. running back to run through to the left. And wow, what a push yeah. by their front three on the yeah. left side. Jacob Bruce, that left tackle block. Two Wolves there are in and pushed them into our linebacker. Great blocking by West Florida. First and 10, Durden back in motion to the left and he'll come back to the right. Big uh, running back in there is Phillips. They'll throw it out here and what a snag by the outside receiver, Caden Leggett. Makes a great catch down inside the 20 to the 16, 17 yard line. First down, West Florida. Yeah, field curl, curl route is what we call it there by number 14 for West Florida. And nice pitch and catch. What a really great catch by West Florida's receiver. First down for the Argonauts. First and 10, ball at the 27 yard line, or ball at the 17 yard line, I should say. Two receivers to the left, one receiver to the right is Caden Leggett running back in the ball game is CJ Wilson who scored on the first or their second possession of the ball game man in motion that's Durden they do a lot of motion with him looking to throw out to Durden incomplete in and out of the hands and then Amos Dawn had a chance to pick it if he wouldn't try to go I think for the kill shot he might have had a chance to pick that off right there yeah so what I'm noticing from Pee Wee is he's just a gunslinger his feet are not always set under him as a good base but he's just going to rip it throw it and look 
look for us to have some more turnovers, interceptions in this game. He's just throwing that sidearm out there. Almost a dangerous play and almost a big play for the Wolves defense. 10.46 to go here on the second quarter clock. They've got two receivers to the left, one right, and the H-back. They're going to fake it. RPO action across the middle. Intercepted. Intercepted. Devontae Matthews picked it. Devontae Matthews picked it. They tried to force it in there. And Devontae Matthews, who had 12 tackles last week, got a big pick inside the 10 down to the uh, where they're going to put it at the four yard line first down west georgia i think i called it but cade what do you what do you got for us down there you are exactly <laughs> right willie that quarterback tried to pull a patrick mahomes there sidearm through the middle and did not think about any defenders being in the area whatsoever Check out the UWG Productions instant replay. They even got a nice little handshake going. Kadarius Satterwhite and Devontae Matthews. He's got the, the pink gloves on. It is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let's see if we can get a 97-yard drive going right here. Darius Clark, the running back. Frost will give it to him. Up to the five, and he got to the five. That was it. <laughs> Gain of one. And I'm sure the mojo down there on the sideline has changed a whole lot more, I would say, Mr. Perry. Defense has their confidence back after last week, boys. This is going to be fun to watch. There's a lot of crazy handshakes just like you said i think everybody worked on a new handshake this week i think that was part of coach dean's game plan for the defense second pick of the ball game for peewee jarrett first pick by Devonte matthews as we go two receivers right one left tight right darius clark still the running back six on a play clock 958 on the game clock takes the snap Frost going to throw it complete to Steven Peterson at the 20 yard line. First down West Georgia. Yeah, good read by Harrison Frost. They had a linebacker beat our offensive line to the left side and he pulled it off that read and connected with his receiver for a first down. Great play by Harrison. First and 10 West Georgia. We continue to push the ball down the field. Steve Peterson looks to be that go to guy. 15 yard completion. 935 to go. Second quarter Wolves up 14 to 7. Got a big pick by the defense, and we're going to try to do something with it. Hinkle the tight end. Two receivers left, one to the right. We'll fake it, come out here and throw it out to LaPerry on Perry. Perry makes a man miss, 30-35, a gain of 16, first down West Georgia. Man, have we missed that. That was a great initial read, pre-snap read by Harrison Frost. He had LP out to the right side, just running a quick hitch. Based on the initial leverage from the corner, he liked what he saw. Harrison ripped it out there. And LP made a man miss for a first down. Great read. LP, we need him. Yeah, yeah. We need LP. Here comes Yost back in the ball game. Tight left, double tight left. We'll run the stretch play left side. Darius Clark up near the 40. They're going to mark him at the 39, a gain of three. Second and seven. Yeah, talking about West Florida's quarterback, Pee Wee, he's 55 for 102 entering the season. So that's just about a 53% completion uh, completion percentage. So he's he's a gunslinger. He's going to rip it. Uh, you know, he's got two INTs as well to initially to start the season or coming into today's game and with two more added on today so look for their defense to have a big game in the passing they just, did a, they just did a hockey line change with their entire defensive front will bring uh, clark on a fake we're gonna go deep with la perry on perry and just a little too high lp playing that outside receiver spot at a uh, whopping five foot eight for us out there and he tried to go up high and couldn't make the catch yeah i wish harrison was a little quicker with that delivery he had lp initially right as he broke and hold held it for a few more seconds and that allowed the corner to break in and make a nice play third down and long for the wolves so we're sending out a new right tackle brandon pippen Kyrie jones is out of the ball game we'll get kate perry and on that see what happened to Kyrie? frost all day to throw Com incomplete intended for LaPerry on perry he was trying to set up i think to get hit unfortunately instead of trying to bring the ball in and it'll be fourth down that one hurt because i think lp should have caught this football we'll see it on the uwg productions instant replay Man, that was a tough break for the Wolves. 
Yeah, tight coverage there yeah. for West Florida's number eight. Sherrod Oliver in coverage for the Argonauts. So tough break. Riley Mason will have to punt it away. Joe Skinner will hopefully give us a good snap. We're on our own 39-yard line with 8.14 to go second quarter. Wolves do hopefully change the field position here a little bit. Punt, a wobbly one, but it's effective. Hits at the 26 and will take a West Georgia bounce to the 20-yard line, 21-yard line. So we'll About take it. 40 yarder. Yeah. Thing. yeah, not bad. I, I like Riley. Yeah. <laughs> As he lead, uh, is like yeah. the leading punter in our conference. He's a good, good player for us. Flips the field. He's a weapon. We have a. No flag. We do, ha do we, we have, have a flag? flag? I'm waiting for they're, the official. They're huddling up. I don't see a flag though, do you? Oh, it's right there on the logo by the V. Ah, it's hiding right in the middle of plain sight. Hopefully it's on the Argonauts. They're pointing like it is. <laughs> 8 2 to go second quarter. We will have a media timeout once our officials can figure out. Eddie Smith is the referee in tonight's ball game. Clifton Head is the umpire. Dustin Mobley is the linesman. Daniel Mobley is the line judge. Wonder if they're uh, related in any way. Matt Keller, side judge, Chris Adams. During the kick, holding number 12 of the kicking team. 10 yard penalty would be added to the end of the kick. First down. So they had a holding that on was, us. That was a long huddle to call a holding on us. Well, I think they were trying to figure out how to enforce it. But nonetheless, we're going to take a time out here on UWG Productions and kiss one of 2.7 Wolves with a 14-7 lead over the Argonauts. Thank you to Chamber President and CEO Karen Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Uh, I am the face of someone a little hypnotized. <laughs> you are a person, this is the face of someone I WTF. Okay, this is the emoji of that. Who knows this person? I assume we kind of all do. I love people's reactions, I love meeting people. I want people to be skeptical, because when they're skeptical, then their jaw drops. Smile. <laughs> There were some zombies, uh, people hid, people under chairs, there were superheroes. I just met two students tonight who showed me photos that we took time after time me coming to campus, so I'm very grateful that they come. I encourage you to be skeptical people, but we as a people, we as a country, change your opinion with more information. That's all I want. Back at it here at University Stadium in Rayland Field, West Georgia with a 14-7 lead as West Florida will get the ball back after forcing a West Georgia punt. They'll hand it to, I believe that's uh, Hargrove, left side, a nice tackle there by Robert Carter coming up from his corner position to make the stop Number after a gain of three, three second and seven. For West Florida. I'll get these double numbers eventually. Hargrove on the carry. Four, Carter, they're looking like the yet. Dallas Cowboys, Willie. I mean, that's what their jerseys look like to me. Yeah, they are. They've got a good look. Navy pants, white helmets, and white jersey. And they've got Check a lot down. of col hey. colored combinations that they can Number break three, out three. throughout the course of the season. I like their green uniforms. Second and seven. I like our red helmets better, though. 
They'll fake it, they'll sling it out here, and oh my goodness, Deontay Overstreet just had an interception go through his hands. That might have been registered at 150 miles an hour. He is a gun <laughs> slinger, and he is just gonna throw it whether they're open or not. Oh, let's take a look at this instant replay. Oh my gosh. Just, just the, the sidearm fastball right there from Pee Wee, and we almost, had a big interception there for the Wolves' it defense. Like, it looked like he's just fielding a Sunday hop and just <laughs> shortstop. Just a shortstop, man. Third down and a long seven. We'll call it even eight. Big play for the Wolves. A receiver to the right, three to the left. They're going to pass. Pee Wee looking across the middle and knocked out. Robert Carter knocked it out. And oh, we're going to get a flag. Oh, no. Robert Carter was put on an island with their one of their top receivers, Caden Leggett, and it's on the West Florida sideline, so you know it's going to be a 15-yard penalty. Pass interference, defense, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. Really on third down, when in doubt, you always throw it to your sideline. Because you're... That's right. You've got the influence of the coaches on that sideline. Yeah. So we had a one-on-one -on -one matchup to West Florida sideline, and they were both being pretty physical. I don't know if we can take another look at it, but they've got the benefit of the yeah. call and first down for the Argonauts. Yeah, ball will be put up at the 48-yard line, first and 10. Jarrett, Pee Wee Jarrett, the quarterback, three-step drop, a lot of time to throw. He'll step out, now try to run. We'll have a holding. They should come back. Keith Harris pushes them out of bounds. But check a flag on the... Uh, it's got to be holding. Got to be in the vicinity of holding. Yeah. What, I, what I'm noticing from Pee Wee is he's pretty set on his first and second reads. He's not somebody who's going to work the whole field. Uh, he's initially just going to go to one side, and that's, that's who he's going to stick with. So that just limits you as a quarterback, you know, if the defense can... Personal foul, hands to the face, oh. defense number 56. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. First down, automatic. A tough break there. Um, they get it on Malcolm Mercer, a illegal hands to the face, the junior from America Sumter High School. Ah, tough one for the Wolves right there. All their yards have been penalty yards here on this drive. That'll take them inside the 40, down to the 37-yard line. First and 10, Argonauts. Running back is still Hargrove, receiver to the left, two to the right, H back left. They'll fake it to Hargrove, they'll throw it out here, and what a catch by Durbin, my goodness. He's got great hands, he just, that's the textbook catch. He's got his hands out in front of him, catches the nose of the football. He reminds me of a little bit bigger, obviously, John Hurst yeah. for the Wolves. Yeah. He's a little bit bigger John Hurst, if you guys can remember John Hurst I mean, from a couple look, years ago. that's a heck of a catch, just concentration to pull that in, great hands. Second and seven, gain of three. Hargrove behind uh, Byron Jarrett, Byron Pee Wee Jarrett. Same formation, two left, one right, H back left. Wolves with four on the D line. They'll run it out here to the left. Demetrius Lofton trying to get him, can't get him. 30, 25, down to near the 20 yard line, knocked out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Good run by Ravion Hargrove. It was, again, they had a great push by their left side of the O line and he just bounced it outside for a big game. Marzavian Dix is in the ball game now. Mason Huntley and Shaheen O'Neal. We'd make a hockey line change. Allen Johnson out. Malcolm Mercer out. Demetrius Lofton out. Nice drive so far by West Florida. Five plays, 48 yards. A lot of them being with some help. With some help <laughs> from the penalty yards. Two receivers to the right now. One to the left. H back left. They'll bring him in motion. He's actually a wide receiver. Here comes left. Uh, Pee-wee's going to throw the ball's out. And ball's out. Mason Huntley forced the fumble. I think Keith Harris fell on the football. No, it was Keandre Williams who, who fell on the football. Keandre Williams fell on the football. Mason Huntley with a strip sack and a big play for the Wolves. The third force turnover here in the first half. First down, West Georgia. Yeah, defense has come to play today. And that's their third turnover in the first half. And you got to be loving it if you're on the West Georgia defense right now. Big time play. Brings up first down for the West Georgia offense. Love to see it. 
Let's go down to the third member of our crew in Cade Perry. I got a little excited there. I'm out of breath. <laughs> I unplugged my headphones, almost threw the mic, almost got kicked off the sidelines. Oh, no. What a huge strip sack there. I mean, <laughs> unbelievable. Trips to the right, one to the left. We'll give it to Jackson Carson left side. Carson, shifty, makes a man miss at the 34-yard line, and he'll go down there after a gain of five. Mason Huntley with a huge strip sack recovered by Keandre Williams. And a first down West Georgia. Look at the shiftiness by a 230 pound back. Yeah, the way he can control his body, body control for his size is pretty impressive. I mean, he stopped on a dive and dime and jumped up in the air and, and got a few more yards. Great play on first down again for the offense, getting positive yards on first down. Second and five, 515 to go. We swap our tight ends to the right. Here we go. We'll run the stretch toss out to the right side. Carson up to the 40, the 41 yard line. Bryce Carlson, the run game coordinator, love that one. First and 10, West Georgia. Feed him is all I can say. He is carrying the load in the running game and always getting positive yards. Give it to our big running back, number 23, Jackson Carson. Kyrie Jones, the right tackles back in the ball game. That's a good sight, good sign. Maybe just got rolled up on a little bit. No Zetarius today, right? Yes. Receivers to each side. Too tight. Carson, the running back. Beside Harrison Frost will give it to Carson. He'll get up a gain of three to the 44-yard line. Again, positive yards on first down in the running game. That just opens the plate sheet for coach dean as a play caller and coach graham and graham craig i should say and allows you to have all your options 410 to go here second quarter west georgia with a 14-7 lead trying to get some points before the half they do get the ball to start hey there's nobody down here we got numbers down here at the bottom and now they're still confused two receivers to each side we'll throw it out here to zay Britt. Britt's not going to get anywhere he'll th be thrown out of bounds and for whatever reason, they're going to keep the clock running. And we got nothing. It's third down. No, I'd like to see it down the field pass on that one. Side to side, didn't get any yards. Third and about seven for the Wolves offense. I'll tell you this, we've seen a lot more sets this week with tight ends. We're using the tight end a lot. Mason Yost and uh, Ian Hinkle both come out now right when I say that. Uh, receivers to the right. One to the right, Zay Britt. Three to the left, Marquise Bridges and Ronnie Blackman check in, and T. Cole's in there as well. Trying to get the play clock, uh, play call to him, and Coach Dean's going to have to burn a timeout with the play clock. Timeout. Down. West Georgia. That's their first of the half. We will keep it here on UWG Productions at KISS 102.7. Alongside Willie Candler and Kay Perry and Matt Skinner here with you. It's a beautiful night for football. And Kay, I, th I feel like the crowd started to pick up. We thought that uh, it wasn't going to be very big, but it seems like it's come in a little bit. Yeah, they, they, they filled in some, I can tell you that. I mean, <laughs> before, when I walked down here at first, I know we had that converse conversation of, wow, it's fall break for just about everybody in West Georgia, including the West Georgia students. But we do have students here today, so a good showing to support our Wolves. Yes, and it's a, a, a big day here at the university. I actually see yep. John Hurst here. We just mentioned him as a great receiver for West yeah. Georgia. And he lives now. They bought a house at Carrollton, him and his wife, Kimberly. Why wouldn't you want to live in the city of dreams, Willie? <laughs> <Really? laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> hey, me and Cade like it okay. I have some memories from college that are still <laughs> too fresh that I just got to go back to Atlanta. Uh, 3.14 to go, second quarter, two receivers to each side. Carson in at running back. West Florida shows a five-man defensive front, and they'll bring a, an extra man safety blitz. We'll throw it to Ronnie Blackman and just couldn't get it to him. Incomplete, and it'll be fourth down. Ronnie was open. They brought a safety blitz, and we'll have to punt it away. Yeah, they're asking for pass interference there, but tough play. Back shoulder to throw, one-on-one -on -one matchup there. And sometimes it's not always the highest probability completion there from a probability standpoint, but tough break for the offense not being able to put a good drive together after the turnover. So fourth and seven, just could not pick it up there. Ten seconds on the play clock. We're going to have to snap this pretty quickly. 
309 on the game clock. 14 to 7 Wolves lead. We'll see what Riley Mason could do. Good snap. Mason will boom it away. End over end kick to their up man. Not the best of punts from Riley there, but he gets it down to the 27 yard line. Got it away. They actually brought a pretty big rush. We will keep it here with 3.03 to go. It will be nice to uh, try to get one more stop here before the half. Yeah, well, defense has done a great job so far this game of keeping everything in front of them. And we've got some help with the turnovers, but they've made great plays. So look for them to just keep doing what they're doing. Three minutes, three seconds to go. West Florida will take over on their own 27 yard line. And that same two, t uh, two receivers or three receivers and a tight end look. Two to the left, one to the right. Going to throw out here. Complete inbounds to Durden. A gain of seven. 2.55 and running on a second quarter clock. It's second and five. Man, this kid has a cannon. Yeah, it, it does not break trajectory or angle, when you will, when it comes out of his hand. It is just a flat seed, a line out of his hand. Big arm. Second and five. Ball at the 32-yard line. They flip the formation now to the right side. Same look. Second and five, they'll fake it, looking to throw. Now he'll step up. Jarrett going to run 25 or 35-40 uh, up to the 43-yard line. Might have to put a spy on him. Jarrett's a pretty good quarterback in, in uh, space. Clock running 222, 221, 220 in the second quarter. So he reminds me a lot of the Florida Tech quarterback back in the day, Mark Cato, number seven as well. He had a big arm and he could run around as a quarterback. And he always gave us a hard time as, or gave our defense a hard time when we played Florida Tech. They are taking their time with 15 seconds on the play clock. We're just about under two minutes and we are here in the second quarter. Same formation look. See if we can get some pressure here with six on the play clock. Looking to pass is Jarrett. Double thumps. Uh -oh. Got a man open. Throws it out here to him. He's open at the 20. Caught it at the 15. And will finally bring him down inside the 10. Nice pitch and catch there. That's their slot guy, David Durden. Yeah, they stop and go outside. One-on-one -on -one coverage. He pump faked the stop. And our corner bid and their receiver number 17 David just outran him and good pitch and catch for a big play for the Argonauts 140 to go inside now 138 big pitch and catch by the Argonauts a gain of 54 on that play and gets them in the red zone and they are in the red zone that ball was up in the air for 20 years it felt like <laughs> two receivers to the left now one to the right the H back is on the left side Big running back in the ball game. That is e or C J Wilson. They'll fake it. They're going to follow him up. Touchdown. Left with uh, Jarrett Byron Jarrett with a touchdown. Some extracurricular activity going on now. And a touchdown for West Florida with a minute 14 to go here in the first in the first half. And we are about to be a P A T away from being all knotted up. Their PAT will be from Griffin Sarah, the junior place kicker. They'll reset the play clock. Long snapper is Wyatt Adams. And to hold it is Steve Dawson. Snap high, brought down, kick is up. It looks good because it is good. Kicked it into the AOB. Timeout on the field. Oh, no, we'll keep it here. We're going to keep it here. We'll thankfully keep it here. We have hit our media allotments here in the first half, thankfully. Yeah, I was here early today. We had an alumni football lunch that hosted at the AOB. And great time to get together with some former Braves and some uh, more recent Wolves just to kind of rehash some old football memories. Great seeing everybody, and hopefully we can kind of grow the brotherhood, if you will, in the years to come. Uh. And it is also a big night here. Talking about your alumni lunch and you guys had its first responders night here at the stadium. Some all, all paramedics, first responders, EMTs are free into tonight's ball game. We can't thank them enough. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the least we can do is give them a free ticket to a football yeah, game. Yeah, absolutely. Great cause for West Georgia to host them tonight. And, you know, we had a great turnout by them. And hats off to them as well. There's the West Georgia Ambulance Service right there. We appreciate all their hard work. Always want to look at them, but never want to meet them up close, no, right? Exactly, exactly. 
One minute, 14 seconds to go, second quarter. They got a lefty that kicks it off is Caden Williams. Six foot one, 160 pound freshman. And he'll put toe to leather, kick it deep. LaPerion Perry will take it three yards deep and he will take a knee. What do you do here, Willie? Two timeouts, a minute 14, or do you press the press the needle a little bit? What do you do? I think you, as a play caller, if you can get two quick first downs, and I think you get aggressive, but I think this first play is going to set the tone for how Coach Dean wants to handle this drive. Wolves do get the ball to start the second half, so that is something to consider, but you would love to have a little two-for-one option here. You would. I think it's, it's going to tell you a lot of how Coach Dean wants to handle this drive on this first play. Carson in there. We do have our main wide receiver group in there. It's Tay Huff, Steve Peterson, Terrell Coles. They Britt up top. So Carson, the down, uh, the lone running back. They have a three-man line, six defensive backs on the field. We are going to just try to get a quick run with Jackson Carson up near the 30 to the 29-yard line. We'll see if yeah. We're trying to pick it up a little bit. Yeah, I think that tells you how he wants to handle this. He's just going to probably milk this clock into halftime, take a tie ball game, and come back in the second half. Here comes Ian Hinkle. And Zay Britt steps off. 20 seconds on the play clock. Receiver to the right, two receivers left, tight left. For the Wolves, high snap, handled. We'll give it to Carson, left side. He hot hurdles the man at the 30, up to the 35, dragging wimpy tacklers to up to the 40-yard line. 41-yard line. What a run by Jackson Carson. We'll see if we go quickly now. We do still have two timeouts. Ball has been set, and the clock is running. Frost trying to get his guys up on the line of scrimmage. They have too many men if they can get... Oh, nope. they wouldn't they let us snap uh, it. Okay. Two receivers to each side. Frost looking, looking. Got a man in Terrell Cole, and we're going to have a flag. Hey, now. 12 seconds on the second quarter clock. Both guys were pushing. We'll see who they get it on. Both guys were jawing with the hands. This will be a 15-yard penalty, Willie. Really. Pass interference. Defense. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. So that'll put us on the plus side of uh, territory to the 45-yard line. I still think you need about 20 yards to get into field goal range yes. here. Let's see if we can get a play over the middle and call timeout. 12 seconds on the clock. Frost, late blitz. He picks it up. Going to throw it deep for Zay Britt and incomplete. With six seconds on the clock, we went for all the marbles right there and didn't come up with anything. A late pressure by uh, a yeah. good pressure by a couple of different guys. Number 90 being one of them, Laron Cox. So West Florida is going to bring in their Hail Mary package. They've got a few receivers now back at around the 10 yard line of their red zone. And let's see if we just take a quick hitter. Frost steps up and oh, in and out of the hands of Terrell Cole. Incomplete. Then we could have possibly had a second left on the clock, but let it go off his hands. Incomplete, and that'll do it for the end of the half. West Georgia does get the ball to start the second half. This is exactly the first half I expected, Willie. Yeah, it's a dogfight. You know, great things that we've seen by the Wolves' defense and offense. They came out, put a couple good drives together. It's, it's just going to be a dogfight the whole game. We'll get ready to send it down to Cade Perrin, who we've got a, I'm sure, a, a pretty uh, steady Eddie David Dean right now. He, I mean, you got to like where you're at. I know you got the three turnovers. Maybe you would like a little more offense, but West Florida coming in with over 500 yards of offense almost a game. Yeah, they're doing a good job. You know, defense is keeping us in the game, and let's send it down to Cade here with Coach Dean. Coach, three big turnovers there for the defense going into halftime. Offense seems to be a little unsteady at times, a little steady at times. So what are we going to do at halftime to adjust for that? Well, we got to keep, these, keep getting these turnovers, and we got to capitalize on them offensively. We, we've had too many opportunities not to take advantage of them. Uh, you know, it's good defense. They're really good, and, we, and we've, we've left some balls out there on the field. We've had some drops, and we've got to make plays out wide. We're running the ball well. I think, you know, we're mixing things up well. 
we're just not catching the ball out wide like we should. Do you think you're educating the refs well enough? <laughs> well, I'm trying to, but uh, you know, it, they're holding every snap, and I'm sure we're holding a little bit too, but that's that's part of football. <laughs> we have to do a better job of getting off of those holds. Well, as a lawyer, I can tell you that you're doing very good. Let's go. Thank you, Cade. Got to love Coach David D, man. One of the best in the biz. Halftime here at Raylan, uh, or University Stadium in Raylan Field, 14 to 14. Looking forward to a strong second half. Willie Candler, Cade Perry, and Matt Skinner with you. Don't go anywhere here on UWG Productions. It's going to be a great second half, we hope, right after this. We'll be back for more. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. RIDA is a national non-emergency medical transportation management company headquartered in Villa Rica, managing the transportation of Medicaid members to their medical appointments. With a keen focus on care, Verida uses best-in-class call centers, business operations, and technology services to meet the needs of members. Verida is partnering with the University of West Georgia to offer call center training, career development, and leadership development tracks that allow employees to advance in their careers. Our program is open to the West Georgia community. Verida is a proud supporter and sponsor of UWG Athletics. Go Wolves! <laughs> I've traveled to all 50 states, nine countries, performing hypnosis. I wrote my thesis in grad school on hypnosis. Started as a magician, I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Audience, oh, this is the face of someone a little hypnotized. <laughs> People. I want you to be skeptical because when they're skeptical, then their jaw drops. Smile. <laughs> Point at her. Happy face. <laughs> Anger. <laughs> there were some zombies. Uh, people hid people under chairs. They were superheroes. I just met two students tonight who showed me photos that we took time after time me come to campus, so I'm very grateful that they come. I encourage you to be skeptical people, but we as a people, we as a country, change your opinion with more information. That's all I want. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin, how's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. With over 25 years real estate experience, we dedicate ourselves to doing business the right way all the time. Hi, I'm Tony Tritt, co-owner of Tritt Realty, a premier real estate brokerage serving Georgia and Alabama. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a seasoned investor or builder, or maybe you're relocating to our area to embark on a new opportunity. 
We want to lock arms and guide you seamlessly through the entire real estate process from start to finish. We want to become your lifetime real estate partner. Find us online at TrittRealty.com or come on by our office in downtown Carrollton and get started today. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups. And over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm going to send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm going to throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our NAT sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our cameras feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions YouTube page. Bye. <laughs> Hi guys, this is Danny. I am the director of community traditions here at the University of West Georgia. We're here at Glowglob. We're doing a bunch of different events. I'm just welcoming back the freshmen to our university. I came to Glowglob tonight because I got the email. I saw it all over social media, so I thought it'd be a fun thing to do with my friends. Honestly, me and my buddies were kind of bored, and we heard about it, and we were like, okay, let's go. We wanted to get out of the house, and we usually get out about one night a week. Uh, me and my friends just wanted to three in something new and different. Kind of a social event. We just wanted to get out of the dorm. I totally whooped her butt in some mini golf. <laughs> That's We did. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's good. I don't usually win. I won my game, but it was fun. Just a little. <laughs> Not me. I cheated. No. She cheated. <laughs> she cheated the whole time. Not even a little bit. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, I've been practicing all my life for it, so, you know. Yeah, I'm kind of a master at it. Hey, y'all, we might know. We might know. We might know, y'all. Hey, let's see if I can play. I don't really know how to play for it, but we're going to get it going today. When you throw it, you gotta flick your wrist very good. <laughs> you dig what I'm saying? Let me shoot one like I'm carry. Uh, the glasses. Yes, I got this cool band. Oh, uh, I like the atmosphere. I like the music, the blue lights, the glow in the dark is really cool. My favorite golf player? <laughs> Tiger Woods, I guess. <laughs> uh, Tiger Woods. I've seen him in person. Tiger <laughs>
sell online tickets directly from your school's website. Scan digital or printed tickets with the Hometown Gate app. And get immediate access to ticket revenue with real-time reporting. At no cost to your school. It's that easy to bring touchless ticketing to your hometown. Hometown. Fast scans, happy fans. I guess she's beating you. Yeah, yeah. You falling a lot? Yeah. You want me to hold your hand? Yeah.
Light shining bright here at University Stadium in Rayland Field under a full moon tonight almost in West Georgia and West Florida. Just as advertised, it's 14 to 14, Willie. Great first half defensively for West Georgia, forcing three turnovers. Unfortunately, didn't do a lot with those turnovers, but it could be a different game without them. But overall, what did you take on the first half? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a dogfight all night with these two teams. I mean, they're top teams in the conference. Uh, West Georgia, uh, you know, had a tough loss last week to Mississippi College, but looking for a bounce back game. And West Florida is one of the top offenses in there. West Georgia's defense, they're doing a pretty good job uh, the first half. You know, they're going to, same thing, they're to throw the ball around in the second half and just got to keep it in front. 16 carries for over 80 yards for Jackson Carson. He was a work workload in that first half. I expect us to go back to that running game on this first drive. I do, I do. I think that's where we had our most successful drives is when we uh, fed Jackson Carson and he carried the load on first down and, uh, you know, look for him to have a big second half. And we've got to create something in the in the passing game. You know, our, our receivers have got to win one-on-one -on -one battles and we've got some pass interference calls, but we need a receiver to step up and make a big play here in the second half. Cade Williams will kick it off the lefty. 6'1", 160 pound freshman for him. He's out of Allen High School in Texas. Allen High School is a very famous high school in Texas. I think I've heard of it. Big high school. All right, we're gonna decide a winner in 30 minutes, whether you like it or not. We'll come to Cade Perry and after we kick this thing off to get his thoughts on the second half. End over end kick, and it will take a dr LP back to the goal line. Gail LP from the goal line, 10, 15, 20. He makes a man miss, and they said he was stepped out at the 21 yard line. Let's go down to Cade Perry. Had a brief chat with Coach David Dean coming out of the locker room. Look for this first offensive possession to try to be more balanced than it's been in the first half. So I know y'all were talking about coming out running. Coach Dean wants to see more balance from the offense in the second half, hopefully to catch these big West Florida offense, uh, defensive linemen off guard, make them huff and puff and get out of the game. Yeah, Harrison Frost in that first half, just 10 of 22, Willie, really, for 98 yards, and that included the long of 32 to Steve Pierce, uh, Peterson. So we'll try to fix that here in the second half. We'll go ground and pound with Jackson Carson. Austin Donaldson pulls up with a nice block, and we get four yards on first down to the 25-yard line. Yeah, that's been the successful recipe for the Wolves' offense in the first half, so look for them to keep running that first down run game right there. Ian Hinkle back in, Steven Peterson back in. I'm so sorry to Ian. As a broadcaster, you gotta be a professional and read the pronunciation chart. We got the best SID in the conference and Jared Boggess. Be nice if I started doing my job and pronouncing the kid's name right. It's Ian Hinkle, he's at the tight left position. Two right, one to the left. Frost behind, balls loose, strip sack, no can do, not good for the Wolves. And West Florida recovers. Aiden Sweat, the junior defensive lineman, I believe he forced it and recovered it. What a play by him. And going the other way is West Florida, first and 10. Yeah, big play by the Argonauts defense there. Ran around the left side of our tackle. I think if you're Harrison, this looks like a quick game and quick game pass. We just got to get that out or try to get tuck it and get a couple yards there. Tough break for the Wolves. It was Guy Laurent, number four. Guy Laurent forced it, and then it was scooped up by big number 45, Aiden Sweat. First and 10, West Florida. Trips to the left, a tight right is Maverick Wolfie, Wolfley, 6'3", 255-pounder. We've got to switch balls out here. Yeah, don't want to use West Georgia's ball, do you? No, I was always very... Particular, particular about you my and you, footballs. You and you quarterbacks and footballs, man. That's right. Not the ideal way we wanted to start it, start this first half or second half with 14-17 on a third quarter clock. They'll run it right side, 15, 10, 5, touchdown untouched. That was Anthony J or uh, Shamari Mason, the running back, and just like that, it is 20 to 14, West Florida. And we've only played 50 seconds here in the first uh, quarter, third quarter. Yeah, talk about starting the second half hot. That's not what you want. West Georgia's got to bounce back right here and put together a good drive on offense. 
And the air in this, uh, I know the air in the broadcast booth just left, so I know down on the sideline it's got to be the same. Here sure did. That was a gut punch right there to start the second half. Griffin Sarah will do the uh, PAT. Steve Dawson will hold it. Kick is up. It looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field with 14-10 to go here in quarter number three. West Florida with a 21-14 lead over the Wolves. We'll, we'll take a timeout and be back for more on UWG Productions and Kiss on the 2.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. University Stadium and Ray Lynn Field. 14 10 to go in the third quarter. West Florida 21 to 14 over our Wolves. Nice drive by West Florida to start off here in the third quarter. End over end kick will send LaPerion Perry back to the three yard line. He'll take it at the three up right side to the 15. Cuts back to the 20 and then grabbed by the face mask and thrown to the ground. Number five, on Perry on the return. No flag. LaPerion Perry was just thrown to the ground from his face mask and we do have an injured Argonaut. Thankfully he is up, but I want to see this tackle again, Willie. Yeah, he was thrown down. It might have just been a high. Let's see. Yeah, just uh, kind of under the, under, under, right, under the right helmet. Underneath, yeah, yeah, right underneath. Right underneath. High tackle, we'll high, call it. Yeah, high tackle, right underneath. His head kind of snapped like he did look like he had a grasp on the, the face mask, but just a high tackle there. Wolves on about the 18-yard line. Let's see if yeah. we can't bounce back after that turnover. First and 10, Wolves have to respond in a quick way. They'll give it to Jackson Carson up the middle and not a whole lot doing on that first down play up to the 21-yard line. Let's send it down to the third member of our crew and Cade Perry and Cade uh, took a little gut punch there to start here in the third quarter. What say you? That was a gut punch, definitely. And honestly, you know, once that fumble happened and that quick score by the Argonauts, you did feel a bit of deflation on the sidelines, but You've got leaders on the team down here pumping pumping up the offense, pumping up the defense. Hopefully we'll come back here and score. High and to the right snap, gives it to Carson, and we'll get up from the 25 up to the 27-yard line. I tell you what, our offensive line has gotten a consistent push for most of the evening, and it's third and one, and we got to find a way to pick up a first down right here. Yeah, they have. They, there's not been a, there hasn't been a lot of negative plays when it comes to rushing the ball tonight. Great job by our O line. We've got third and short here. Look for them to give it to Jackson for a first down. Too tight. 
Man in motion will give it to Jackson Carson up the middle, and it's gonna be close to a first down marker, and I believe we got it. Barely got it five out of yard, 29 yard line, gain of two and a half, first down. Yeah, just don't want to press right here as an offense. I think you've got to have a just consistent mindset of, hey, yes, we've given up the lead, but we just got to get back to the successful drives that we put together earlier and play Wolves football. First and 10, ball at the 29 yard line. 12, 28 to go, quarter number three. We'll give it to Carson, right side again. He got hit behind the line of scrimmage. How did he get out of there? 40, 45, just taking wimpy tacklers with him. Jackson Carson, have yourself a game. The senior from Phoenix City, Alabama. I think they threw a flag late, and I think it's gonna be on the Wolves. That's. They had an Argonaut defender with his helmet off. A dejected look by our eight, number 85 for us. Zach Obi, the junior tight end. Let's see what they call. We have a first down run of 16 yards for now. Personal foul, offense number 85. 15 yard penalty, replay first down. So Zach Obi, was it during the play or after the play? That's the big question. He said replay first down, but I think it came in late. I want to say it was after the play. A so, lot of confusion. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of confusion right now. So we got a personal foul. It, first down and eleven. It looks like. All right. First and eleven. We'll go with it. I guess they went from the spot of the foul. Yeah. We'll give it to Darius Clark now, left side, up to the 30, up to the 32 yard line. And some extracurricular activity in there for the Argonauts. It's second down. Gain of two and a half, maybe three. It's going to be second and eight, Willie. Yeah, tough that we got the first down, but we had to go backwards, you know, so that yeah. negates the positive yards that we had, but. We just can't shoot ourselves in the foot, especially when we're down seven points in a game like this versus West Florida, a top 20 team in the GSC. Got to have positive yeah. plays. Frost looking to throw, has a man and incomplete, intended for Ronnie Blackman, and then a late hit. Yeah, he had uh, Harrison Frost he as had, well. He had Ronnie over the middle on a drag route, wide open as they brought pressure and wasn't able to connect, and he took a shot. Both of them did. They both took a shot. Unfortunate. Let's see as we watch the replay. Yeah, just let him out in front of him too much on the drag route. Wasn't able to connect. Now third and long for the Wolves. Onelio Rios with a nice hit out of Miami, Florida. It's third and eight. Wolves need to try to pick up a first down here. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Frost looking, they'll bring six. Got a man open to Steven Peterson. He called it at the 45 up the midfield and out of bounds at the 50. That's a great play. So we call that a switch route where the two top receivers switch causing confusion for the defenders and back shoulder throw to his boy Stevens for a first down. Big play there, big pickup on third and long. Great job by that offensive line, especially the left side, Parker Gibbs, picked up the extra pressure on the outside as well, Willie. That's, that's just chemistry right yeah. there, receiver quarterback chemistry. First and 10, will throw it underneath the Ronnie Blackman at the 50, across the 50 to the 47 yard line. They actually didn't give us midfield, they gave us the four, our own 49 yard line. Mm. And now we go up to the 47 yard line, second and about five, a long five, with 10.50 to go on the third quarter clock, Willie. Yeah, hit Ronnie there on a short little drag route across the field, and when I say drag route, that's about two to three yards from the line of scrimmage over the middle. Good pickup on first down. Two receivers to the left, one to the right, tight left. Mason Yost will throw it out here to Terrell Cole, who's wide open. T. Cole at the 40, T. Cole 35-30, steps out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Terrell Cole, the sophomore receiver out of Birmingham, Alabama with a first down. Yeah, Terrell Cole caught the ball and had a slight hesitation. I think he thought he was gonna get hit, but he turned around and no one was near him. So great job, a tight turn, get the first down. Now we're on a drive, now we're talking. First and 10, West Georgia. 
A gain of 21, nine play, 56 yard drive thus far, working on about four minutes of clock. First and 10. Receivers to each side, too tight. We flip them with Obi and Mason Yost. Carson in at running back. We'll hand it to Carson. Sidesteps the man and then is not going to get the next man. Great play there by number 14, Cody Lowe, as well as number, I believe it was 25, Khalif Gilmore. Yeah, that was a missed assignment right there with the, with the two tight ends when we flipped them over. And uh, I think they just didn't communicate. And that D lineman shot through and yeah. stopped us for about no yards. Uh, nice run blitz yeah. by West Florida yeah. right there. Give them credit yeah. as they bring out three brand new defensive linemen just as big as the previous three they had. <laughs> Great depth yeah. from West Florida. Trips to the right, four down linemen for West Florida. Harrison steps up, has a man open to Steven Peterson. He caught it inside the 10 to the nine. If he could have kept his balance, he could have scored, but nonetheless, he made the catch is the most important thing. First and goal from the nine. Yeah, tight bunch formation spread out to the right side there. That causes a lot of confusion for the defense of who they're gonna pick up. He had Stevens out on a corner route, good pitch and catch. Unfortunately, he couldn't stay in bounds, but we'll take the first down. Two receivers to the left, we'll hand it to Carson, right side, he's at the 10, he's at the eight yard line, gain of one, second and goal from the eight. This is the kind of drive you wanna see if you're the head coach, David Dean of the Wolves now. They got punched in the mouth with a quick turnover at to start the second half and they put a great drive together here and gotta get some points. Zay Britt comes in the ball game. He's out to the right. Carson's still in it running back. Yost the tight end. We've got T. Cole, Terrell Cole down here at the left. Steven Peterson is the slot receiver on the left. Second and goal from the eight. 8.30 to go on a third quarter clock. Frost takes the snap, fakes, looks, has Steven Peterson, and he cut his route off incomplete. And we'll bring an extra lineman in now. Third down. Looks like, no, looks like Kyrie Jones is coming out. Yeah. And they'll bring back in uh, Brandon Pippen. Yeah, Coach Carlson does not look very happy. I don't know if Kyrie's missing some assignments that they've had. They're going to have a little chat on the sideline. A very vocal, <laughs> vocal, uh, loud chat, as you will. Big third down play. Frost takes the snap. They'll bring four. We'll throw it underneath to Carson. He's at the five. He's at the three. He's at the two. He stretches out. He's going to be short down at the one yard line. And it'll be fourth and goal at the one. Willie, it's go time. Go time. I'd go direct snap to Carson. Heavy package coming in. Well, we got, oh, never mind, not heavy package. <laughs> but man, I would do, I would split Harrison out, Frost wide out like we did earlier and direct snap to Carson. Let's see what Coach Dean dials up here. Fourth down and one. Got a score, it's goal to go. 7.50 on a third quarter clock. Everybody in tight on the line. Frost takes the snap, rolls to his right. T. Cole open, touchdown, Wolves! Terrell Cole, the sophomore from Birmingham, holds it in. How about your West Georgia Wolves with a 14 play, 75 yard drive? That's how you respond if you're the West Georgia offense. Great play right there, roll out right. He had LP to the shallow flat and then he had T. Cole behind him. Great read by Harrison Frost, leads to six points for the Wolves offense. And he gave him a little Naruto action right there. I love it, I love it. Brock Pellegrino to add on the extra point. Pate Hogan to hold it and uh, Joe Skinner to snap it. Snap good, kick up, looks good because it is good. Timeout on the field with 7.40 to go here in quarter number three. We got a brand new ball game again. The fire is back. We'll come back to Cade Perry and on the sidelines for more right after this. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. 
How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. I've traveled to all 50 states, nine countries, performing hypnosis. I wrote my thesis in grad school on hypnosis. Started as a magician, I was a resident assistant in college, and then that parlayed into becoming a hypnotist full time. Audience, this is the face of someone a little hypnotized. I love meeting people. I want people to be skeptical because when they're skeptical, then their jaw drops. Smile. <laughs> Point at her. Happy face. <laughs> Anger. <laughs> there were some zombies. Uh, people hid. People under chairs, they were superheroes. I just met two students tonight who showed me photos that we took time after time me coming to campus, so I'm very grateful that they come. I encourage you to be skeptical people, but we as a people, we as a country, change your opinion with more information. That's all I want. Back out of here, University Stadium and Raylan Field, 21 to 21, your score. How about the Wolves? 15 play, 82 yards, 623 of clock. Now we got to get the defense back in back in the right way. Yeah, when you need a response, that's how you answer. Great job by the Wolves offense tying this ball game up. It's on to the defense. Pellegrino end over end kick will drive West Florida down. A short kickoff down to the 12. Let's come up and make a tackle. Bow Festus Davis. Festus Davis with a big hit. And then we answer with Jeremy Smith, the linebacker out of Jenkins High School in Savannah. Big hit by the kickoff team. Let's go down to Cade Perry. And it looks like we got the mojo back. Uncle Mo is riding high for Uncle us. Uncle Mo is back, and so is the chippiness <laughs> on the football field, boy. As you can tell, that the West Florida players are getting frustrated with our West Georgia Wolves. Cade, you're on television right now, and you look good. Oh, man, look at that. <laughs> I'm on the Jumbotron, too. <laughs> I mean, wow, when do we get the slimming effect? <laughs> the slimming effect. Oh, God. Three receivers to the left, one to the right. I guess that's not a false start. He put his hand on the line and scooted back two yards. Oh, well. They'll uh, run the RPO, and they get it out to the receiver. That's David Durden, one of the top receivers in the Gold South that's Conference, up to the 31-yard line. That's Willie, if you put your hand down on the line of scrimmage and scoot back three yards, that's kind of a yeah, that's false start. Isn't it? The only reason why they would grant that is just the ref's telling you to scoot back. Okay. So maybe that's what he was telling him. Yeah. Second and four. Ball at the 31 with 7.05 left to go in quarter number three. They'll go trips to the right side now, moving left to right, north to south. I don't know why I said that, but it sounded good. <laughs> Tight left. They will run it left side up to the 35, 36, 37, 38 yard line. I'm going to keep my mouth shut, but I'll also say I don't know why they're not running the ball a lot more at us. They've had a lot of success here thus far with it. And it looks to me they really like running to the left side of that line. That's where a lot of these big big runs are running to. They've got two big left tackles. they got a left tackle and a left guard who've got some mass to them, if you will. Both 6'3", 290 and 305, and they want to run it behind them. This is Ravion Hargrove in at quarterback. First and 10, ball on their own 38-yard line. Two receivers right, one to the left. Will bring a pass rush. They'll throw it deep and caught. Oh, what a play. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown West Florida. Caden Leggett on a pass, huge pass play of 52, of uh, 62 yards. That was a two-iron missile throw from their quarterback, Pee Wee Jarrett. I mean... We're watching the replay now. He looks to his right, looks to his left. 
Oh, just an inch Outstretch. taller. Outstretched, yeah, misplayed a little bit by our Kadarius Satterwhite, but yeah. man, he had some steam behind that throw. Big play for West Florida. Yeah, Kadarius Satterwhite needed one more, one more inch on that ring finger to knock it away. Unfortunately for the Wolves, it will not be on this possession. PAT up, PAT is good. I believe we're going to keep it here. We are indeed going to keep it here for the rest of the quarter, I like it. 28-21, your score, West Florida. Now in control with six minutes and eight seconds to go. They answer with three plays and 75 yards. Yeah, again, this is the first test really that West Georgia's defense has had to face this season with this type of offense. I mean, they're a predominantly pass-heavy offense. They've got a good run game as well, but this quarterback is a different quarterback than we faced all year. He's got a big arm. They've been very successful over about 500 yards average offensive and offensively, and we're seeing it tonight. Well, if anything, our offense has a lot of juice after the, last, after the last possession. We didn't roll over. We went on a huge 15 play drive for 82 yards and took over half the clock, almost six and a half minutes. So now we'll get the ball back and try to do it again. As uh, Cade Williams from Allen, Texas will kick it with his left foot. End over end kick will drive LP back to the goal line and he'll take it two yards deep and he'll take a knee. Nice kick. By Cade Williams. And it'll be first and 10 at the 25 yard line for the Wolves. A good back. And Cade talked about it about with Dean at half uh, about having a balanced look. And we were very balanced on that last drive. A lot of Jackson Carson, a lot of the passing game with Terrell Cole and Steven Peterson. So we'll see what we can do on this next drive. Yeah, we had a good success, what seems like for the first time this game with some receivers getting open. I think West Florida played a little bit more zone coverage and Harrison did a great job of finding the holes in the defense. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Here comes Tay Huff. Now we have nobody in motion. Frost rolling to his right, gonna get it out here to Tay Huff and he stepped out of bounds at the 21 yard line. Went back four yards. We had Zay Britt open down the sideline, but got to give credit, uh, a little backside pressure to 33, Onelio Rios for uh, West Florida, forcing Harrison. Uh, but I think we were going to run a bootleg anyways yeah, out of it. Yeah, naked bootleg, and not a great job by Tay Huff. He's got to know where the, the first down marker is. You never want to be behind the chains. Here comes Harrison, looking to pass, connecting to Zay Britt out of bounds at the 31-yard line. Nice pitch and catch of 10 yards, and it will be third and four. And West Georgia tonight on third down. We'll take a look at it real quick like, if I can see. Third down, they're, they've hit 50% of them. We'd like to go over that 50% mark here. They're five out of 10 on third down tonight. West Florida just one of two. They've only had two third downs tonight. Frost looking. A lot of time. Connects to Tay Huff. What a catch. First down, West Georgia. Good catch by Tay Huff. He made up for that mistake. He did. Yeah, great job. Great concentration. High throw went up and high pointed that football. Brought it in. First down for West Georgia. Receivers to the right is Tay Huff and Zay Britt. Receiver to the left is Terrell Cole. He's by himself on an island down here. They don't have any deep safeties, Willie. They got eight in the box. We'll give it to Jackson Carson. He'll hurdle a man and he'll get up to the 44 yard line. A nice six yard carry. Second and four. Yeah, no high safeties. They're bringing in their high safeties to within about seven yards of the line of scrimmage. And really, I take that as a disrespectful play call by their defense, meaning they don't expect us to beat them over the top. So I'd love to see if we can't air, it, air one out deep and see if we can't get a big play. Receiver to each side. We bring in Ian Hinkle. We'll give it to Carson. Jump stop. What a move. He's so shifty, and he gets a first down again for West Georgia. Pick up a four. What a run by Jackson Carson, Willie. My goodness. Body control for our big running back, Jackson. I mean, he's jump stopping low to the ground. You see one cut there, another cut. 
gets north, delivers and lower his shoulder, gets a first down. It's a tough guy to bring down. 25 carries, 128 yards tonight. He goes over the 100-yard mark for the second week in a row. We'll spell him with Darius Clark. Frost looking, has a man. Zay Britt, incomplete. Good defense, good coverage by West Florida. That is doo -doo 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 -doo, number 10. That was Demarion Gaves. Demarion Gaves, excuse me. I like the play call right there. That's what I was talking about, taking a shot over the top. Wasn't able to complete it, but sometimes it's good just to back those safeties up, open up some routes underneath. Bring Ian Hinkle back in the ball, ball game from Goshen, Alabama. Also, Steven Peterson back in the slot. Two receivers right, one to the left. T. Cole down. Nobody is very deep at all. We'll fake it, run the RPO, and that ball scooped off the turf and incomplete. LP couldn't make the catch, and it's third and 10. Just a little bit low on the throw by Harrison Frost. Yeah, just had a little bit of a tight window, tried to miss low there just so the corner could get his hands on it and LP wasn't able to pull that in. Third and 10, 3.42 to go, third quarter, got to get the first down at the 42. Frost looking, hit as he threw, and it's incomplete. West Florida will hold here on third and 10, and it'll be punting time probably for the Wolves. Yeah, they brought man pressure there, brought all the linebackers and just had man-to-man -man with all the receivers out wide. And looked like they had a pretty good jump. I don't know if, yeah, they timed that snap up really well. And they were right before Harrison even hit his third step, they were in his lap. Tough break for the Wolves offense. They're running guys off and on the field, and Joe Skinner will snap it. Riley Mason will try to pin the Argonauts back deep. Good snap. Mason gets it off. His best punt of the night, and Durden will call for fair catch at the 11-yard line. That turned over very nicely, a 40-yard punt down to the 11. And... Uh, Almost, yeah, about a 39-yard punt. Yeah, good job of flipping the field there by Riley. Nice punt off the right foot of 84, tight spiral, pins them with, within the 15-yard line. I mean, flipping the field, especially with a game like this and a tough opponent like West Florida is huge. The so ball at the 11-yard line, first and 10 with 3.30 on the clock. Wolves got to find a way to make a stop. Three receivers to the right, tight left. They started out there with tried with an extra wide receiver. Tried to play with 12, we can't do that. And then uh, Shamari Mason, the running back. He'll run it out here to the left. We miss a tackle and then Mason Huntley will finally bring him down at the 16 yard line. We had a guy, uh, that's Jalen Tarver out of AC Flora High School that had him near the first down marker, but just couldn't get him down and it's, a gain of five, second and five. Yeah, I know AC Flora. That's over there in Columbia. Had a lot of family go to AC Flora, play baseball. So that's pretty cool. Second down and five. Met some of your wonderful family tonight. Yeah, they were mom and my aunt came out and supported tonight. Great to see them out to catch a game this year. 2.55 to go, quarter number three, two receivers right, one to the left. They do have that H back on the right. And they'll run it up the middle with Mason again. And Arzavian Dix got him. brings him back. And then we throw him a little late to the ground. And no, thankfully, we did not get a late hit penalty there. Gain of a gain, a yard and a half. Good play by Marzavian, his first big play of the night. Yeah, great to see him get his hands around the running back, stopped him. Big third down here for the Wolves defense. Our good friend Seth Kane getting into it on the PA. It's third down. Get on up, get on at it. Here on UWG Productions, a KISS 102.7 got a great ball game. 206, 205 on a third quarter clock. They send a man in motion and put him out there, top of your screen. They will run the quarterback follow play and they got a first down. Huntley will bring them down, it looks like, after a gain of about seven. Yeah, that's their bread and butter play as we've seen throughout the course of this game. He kind of flash, fake flash fakes the run to the running back and just follows him. And they've had positive yards on every time they've called that one. You add two inches on, on his height, he's Cam Newton. I mean, when he, he runs, is, the, yeah. he runs the ball. He reminds me of a lot of uh, Tim Tebow as well. He, 
definitely throws it a little bit better than 10. Yeah. But <laughs> big runner for 245. Yeah. 130 to go, third quarter. Ball at the 24 yard line of West Florida. They'll fake it, RPO, and they're gonna throw a deep ball underneath. Durden, incomplete. Definitely got some feet tangled up. If that's on the West Florida sideline, it's a flag. Luckily, they threw it to our sideline, and it is not a flag. I mean, that ball was about 55 yards carry in the air off his back foot, if that tells you anything. That was a high, deep shot. Good defense by the West Georgia Wolves there, but what a throw. Even if it's incomplete, you can admire that, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Game recognizes game, right, Willie? Well, I don't know how much game I have anymore, <laughs> but. A minute 18 to go, third quarter is 28-21. Second and 10. Takes the snap, slings it out here, Ooh. and that's incomplete. He caught that on the chalk out there, and it's third and 10. I'm so thankful they're throwing the football. Yeah, I, I'm, I am. I'm, I'm genuinely thankful. I, uh, yeah, if I were there, was their coach, Pete, I'd be running it behind the left side of that line. They've given us fits all night. Don't think they've had a negative yard, yard run from that left side, but hey, they want to sling it. Come on. Third and 10, ball on, our, on uh, the their own 24 yard line. A minute 14 to go. This West Georgia crowd trying to get into it. We got a three man front. Now we walk up two guys that's over street. We're looking to bring some heavy pressure here. Jarrett takes the snap, looking, looking. Deontay Overstreet misses the tackle. Then they spin back, and we're going to get him. We're going to get him. Mason Huntley, Deontay Overstreet, and Marzavion Dix. We find a way, and our defense gets off the field. It's fourth down. What a stop by the defense, Yeah, really. big-time players make big-time plays in big-time situations. Great job by the defense. Marzavion and number eight for the Wolves. Mason Huntley. Mason Huntley there containing him inside. Big play for West Georgia's defense. Ronnie Blackman back deep would love a great return. Is this the first time they punted tonight? I think it's no, the second, second, yeah. second time they've punted tonight. Steve Dawson will punt it. He's also their holder. Good snap and a nice punt for Blackman. We'll take it at the 32. He called for fair catch. 20 seconds to go, third quarter. Let's go Wolves, defense holds serve and let's see what the offense can do. That's right. Great job of the Wolves defense here. Now we just gotta put together a good offensive drive here again i think you go back to jackson carson and see if we can't get a shot over the top for a big play beautiful punt and taking a look across the gold south conference valdosta stayed up 14 13 on west Al. shorter mississippi college is a final it's 35 21 the final score today for the choctaws 47 to 14 delta state over north granville they look like the, the team to beat in the conference right now no question but the most important game is right here Back to pass, Frost complete to Zay Britt out in the flat or out near the first down marker and he gets 12 yards. And somebody down to the sideline is really loving that play. 12 seconds to go, third quarter. I think uh, we will hold it. Yeah, I think Coach Dean's gonna sit on this and we'll go to the fourth quarter. Ladies and gentlemen, put your fours up. We're going to the fourth quarter. We got us a ball game here on UWG Productions at KISS 102.7 as the West Florida Argonauts lead the West Georgia Wolves 28-21. Timeout on the field. When we come back, we'll get right back into fourth quarter action right here. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest. That will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me. Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. 
Verida is a national non-emergency medical transportation management company headquartered in Villa Rica, managing the transportation of Medicaid members to their medical appointments. With a keen focus on care, Verida uses best-in-class call centers, business operations, and technology services to meet the needs of members. Verida is partnering with the University of West Georgia to offer call center training, career development, and leadership development tracks that allow employees to advance in their careers. Our program is open to the West Georgia community. Verida is a proud supporter and sponsor of UWG Athletics. Go Wolves! With over 25 years real estate experience, we dedicate ourselves to doing business the right way all the time. Hi, I'm Tony Tritt, co-owner of Tritt Realty, a premier real estate broker serving Georgia and Alabama. Whether you're a first-time buyer, a seasoned investor or builder, or maybe you're relocating to our area to embark on a new opportunity, we want to lock arms and guide you seamlessly through the entire real estate process from start to finish. We want to become your lifetime real estate partner. Find us online at trittrealty.com or come on by our office in downtown Carrollton and get started today. Kevin, meet your father. Kevin. 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 Trusted advice for life. Kevin. How's your mom? Thank you. Life well planned. See what a Raymond James financial advisor can do for you. Here's our good friend Wolfie. UWG Productions at Kiss 102.7. My baby girl got her first picture today with Wolfie. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. First and 10 for West Georgia. Frost going deep, has a man, and it's in and out of the hands of Zay Britt. Man, that would have been a huge hookup of about 40 yards. Instead, it's second and 10. Yeah, I like the play call out of the break there. Coach Dean taking a shot, and you know, we've got to make a play. Somebody's got to make a play if we're going to win this game. And big, big opportunity wasted right there by Zay Britt. Good throw, hit him right in the hands, unfortunate. Tough break there. Great ball by Harrison. Put it right on the money. Oh, yeah. just right through the hands. Off the helmet. And now we're going to shoot ourselves in the foot. Looks like false start for us. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense number 15. Five-yard penalty, second down. So it looks like Kyrie Jones is still out at right tackle. So that means uh, our backup right tackle is is it looks like Brandon Pippen. Brandon Pippen is in the ball game at right tackle. A six foot three, 250 pound sophomore from Alpharetta. He ain't 250. Four receivers going out for routes. Frost hit as he threw and almost intercepted. That could have been disastrous. And it'll be third and 15, Willie. Yeah, not where you want to be if you're West Georgia's offense. Backed up behind the chains. Had a big play, wish we could have converted on the first down play, and now we're looking at third and 15. Got to dial up something, get us some positive yards. I don't expect them to bring the house. They're only gonna bring five. Frost steps up in the pocket looking, and it's intercepted at the 35-yard line. Intercepted right there at the 35. Intercepted by number 10, uh, Demarie Givens. Demarie Givens with the interception, and let's be honest, that was about a 30-yard punt. Yeah. I mean, I, I know it's not a not what you want, but it does flip the field a little bit. Doesn't kill you. He forced that in there. He had vertical routes, and he tried to hit a seam route, and the corner made a good play of just reading the eyes and the football broke in and jumped in front. It is, like Matt, you said, it's about a 25 to 30-yard punt, so let's see if West Georgia's defense can hold them. Yeah, West Georgia's defense is being tasked to stop them again. We got Keith Harris and Xavier Robinson out there at linebacker of this possession. 2-4-5 look for West Georgia. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, tight left, and they will hand it to their guy left side. We met Xavier Robinson can't get the tackle, and then we finally wrap them up. Too bad it's a 10-yard gain, and Ravion Hargrove, the 5-6, 180-pound, Junior from Trotwood, Ohio, with a nice run. Yeah, again, they like that left side. They trust that left tackle, left guard. And every time it seems like they're getting us for a good game when they run it to that side. So good run on first down for the Argonauts. 
Got to make a play. Yeah, got Somebody's got to make a big play here. We've got 14 minutes left in the fourth. Got it's, to it's hard to beg. We've already got three turnovers in this ball game, but yeah. we need one more right here. If we can muster one up, trips to the right, tight left. Balls on the ground. Balls on the ground, and that will help. High snap, and it looks like uh, Jarrett, Pee Wee Jarrett, just took his eyes off of it. The quarterback out of Des Moines, Iowa. Yeah, it looks like he just popped his eyes up too quick there and hit him in the hands, and good break there for the Wolves, second and long now. Hey, maybe asking you shall receive. That's not a turnover. Maybe, maybe we need to ask for, I'm going to ask for another one. We need, we need a big break right here for the West Georgia defense. Let's see what we can dial up. Two receivers to the right, one left, H back right. Big uh, running back in the ball game. Looks like uh, Ravion Hargrove. High snap again. They fake it. We're trying to sack him. Malcolm Mercer there. Now they're going to have to throw it off. And oh, Deontay Overstreet had a chance for a pick six. Oh, right through the wickets. Oh, man, that would have been big time, but we'll take a third and 17. Oh, man, he jumped in front of that. Oh, terrible read by the quarterback. He forced that in there. Deontay Overstreet had a chance to make a big play. If, if you're watching it on the replay, Quarterback spins out of it. Oh, oh just man. a little shorter. Yeah. And pissed. Yeah, I mean, he just had a missile for an arm. And if Deontay <laughs> Overstreet was six foot, he would have caught that. Yep. Third and long now. <laughs> Should we ask one more time? We'll save, we'll save it. Hunker down one Hunker more down. time, you wolves. The wolves need a break. The wolves need a big play. <laughs> Looks like they're going to take a timeout. West Florida calls timeout. The question is, will Kevin There's Enfield no timeout. We were changing the ball to the West Florida ball. <clears throat> so why, so how did our football get out there? <laughs> Maybe that's why he almost threw a pick, because it was the uh, <laughs> West Georgia ball, and he couldn't stand it anymore. You so. quarterbacks in the football, <laughs> man. Y'all so picky. Just feel feel a texture. Football's a football, man. I used, I used to rub them down every Friday, <laughs> Friday uh, afternoon, and I had to get them just the way I liked them. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Snap will bring some pressure. He will break the pressure out to the right. Throw back across the field. Complete for a first down on third and 17. That's a big time play to Larry Rembert. Yeah, great play by Pee Wee, their quarterback. Broke contain along the right side and had his eyes downfield, found a guy right at the change. Big play for the Argonauts. Unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, they looked like Malcolm got held. Yeah, Allen Johnson crashed, and Malcolm, they had him a good grasp on him. And Pee Wee did a good job of finding the receiver for first down. Jalen Shepard, Deontay Overstreet in on the stop. First and 10, West Florida. I bet they run it to the left side. Hargrave is in. They're going to throw it nope. again. They'll take what they can get from David Durden. And Robert Carter will hold them up along with a host of Wolves at the, I think, the 38-yard line. They're trying to go quickly now. Yeah, they're not concerned with the clock. They want to go put some more points on the board at this point in the game. Two receivers to each side. They try to draw us off. We tried, but... We got back. We got to ask for a big play again. This is where the <laughs> West Georgia defense needs to make a big play. Let's see who can step up for us. Pee Wee Jarrett at quarterback. Running back is Hargrove. Jarrett takes the snap, looking, looking. A lot of time to throw. And incomplete. Deontay Overstreet just killed David Durden. But Durden held on to the football. What a catch by David Durden. Great catch and throw there. He had to throw it over our linebacker's outstretched hand. Had some touch on it. Big hit by Overstreet, but they were able to bring it in for a big play for the Argonauts again. Big play indeed. First and 10. West Florida down on the 21-yard line. Can we get another stop? Anytime. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. H back left. Hargrove still in there at running back. 
Takes the snap, looking right, going one-on-one, -on -one, and Durden makes the catch, touchdown. What a catch by David Durden over Robert Carter. One-on-one -on -one coverage to the West Florida sideline, fade route, back shoulder throw, high point, great pitch and catch by the Argonauts for six points, tough break again. We'll watch it on the replay here. He's got one-on-one -on -one coverage to his number one receiver. What high catch. Yeah, high point. Just a good play right there. Got his foot in bounds. What a play. Great replay Great shot there by our crew. PAT will go to Griffin Serra. Good snap, good hold. Kick is up. Kick is good. Timeout on the field with 10.53 to go, fourth quarter. West Georgia trails West Florida 35-21 here on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. We'll be back for more right after this. Hello, my name is Kai Morgan. I'm here with UWG Productions, and we're going to show you our production setup for football because we have a broadcast in a couple of hours. Here we have our Sony 4K camera on the roof. This is one of our camera setups. And over here is our PTZ cam brought into the control room over the University Enterprise Network to give us NDI video. And now I'm gonna send it to Shamaya in the operation room. Hey y'all, my name is Shamaya. I'm here in the operations room. Here we have a in-house audio where we pretty much control all of our music for the stream and in-house. We have our PA announcer here as well. We also house another camera in this area and we're also engineered to where we can talk back to the control room at any time. Now I'm gonna throw the Kai in our TV booth. A big part of a broadcast is communication. Currently, I'm in our play-by-play -play booth where our play-by-play -play and color analysts can see the field beautifully from the 50-yard line. And we have these talkback boxes where they can talk back directly to the control room to keep that communication flowing. Additionally, we have our Ada cams and GVM light kits so we can have a personal view of the talent and to keep our image balanced. And now, I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya on the AOB porch. Hey y'all, so now I'm at the Athletic Operations Building where we house our end zone camera angle. And what's cool about this camera angle is we also get a lot of our replay shots from this angle and we also have a great view of our home sideline. Now I'm gonna throw it back to Kai at our low end zone camera position. Hello everyone, here I am at our low angle camera position. Now this position is crucial because it shows whether someone scored or not at the goal line. And now I'm gonna throw it to Shamaya over on the opposite side of the field. Hey y'all, so now I'm down on the field with our wireless cam. We use Hollyland technology, our transmitter and receiver to get pretty much anywhere on the field. We also have a boom mic attached to a pole for our NAT sound for our broadcast. Here we are in the control room where we have all of our cameras feeds coming in successfully. If you want to tune in to any of our broadcasts throughout the year, you can find us online at UWG Productions YouTube page. Bye. <laughs> Here's your all 27 cam view. I love it. One of my favorite shots of the stadium, Raylan Field at University Stadium. But only thing I don't like is that score, 35-21 West Florida. But credit West Florida, man. They've got a good, high-powered offense making plays. Pee Wee Jared and company to David Durden on a big play. We'll kick it off. Ronnie Blackman takes it from the one-yard line. Blackman up to the 20 across the 20 to the 21 yard line and that's where the wolves will set up shop first and 10. quick look into the gold south conference scoreboard west alabama 20 to 17 over valdosta at half let's go down to the third member of our, co our crew in kate perry it's getting to be go time here boys the offense needs to get something going in this second half nothing has been going whatsoever and it's taking the wind out of the sails of the defense our defenders are down here on the bench they're showing some frustration. Cade, you're back live on television. God. What do you have to say? I mean, we need to keep doing this. I mean, <laughs> I need my own personal camera. Talking body. <laughs> we'll run it. First play to the left. Get about seven out of it. Second and three. Jackson Carson. His name has been called quite a lot tonight. Hinkle will check out of the ball game and we'll go three receivers to the right, one to the left. Time is of the essence. 10 20 to left to go in the fourth quarter. Carson comes beside Harrison Frost. Frost looking, has a man open. It's LaPerion Perry at the 31, up to the 37, and then thrown out of bounds. He's thrown out of bounds. 
Oh, there and there's you go. the flag. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It only took 10 <laughs> seconds to get the flag out, but there we go. LaPerry on Perry with a grab, and we'll get a free 15 yards. Haven't had many of those uh, freebie yards tonight, but we'll take it. And it'll be first down West Georgia. After to the, the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, defense number five, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's number five's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the game. Anthony Johnson, Jr. out of Miami, Florida. Goes straight to the bench. And we're across midfield already, the 47, just what the doctor ordered. That's right. Yeah, LP definitely hit late on that UWG production replay. We'll throw the screen out here to LP up to the 45. And we need to get that ref to turn his mic off. There it goes. Only a gain of two and a half. The clock stays running. And now we got a guy that has some cramps. Official timeout for a defensive injury. We got some cramps going on with 9.59 left to go. Here, it's time to take a 316 Family Medicine. We won't take a timeout, but we'll, of course, give a shout out to our, our friends at 316 Family Medicine for uh, being our injury timeout sponsor this year. Is looking around the rest of the conference, like we said, Mississippi College got a big win over shorter today, 35-21, Delta State 47-14. How about Texas today yeah. versus Oklahoma? Texas was huge. Shut out. Yeah. Shut out versus Oklahoma and that red, yeah. what do they call that, the red? Red River rivalry. That's right. That's a big win for them. We'll give a shout out to uh, 316 Healthcare and their read in just a moment, but first, well, this second down play will fake it to Carson, throw it out here, call LP again. <laughs> look at, and look at Big Bill, Bill <laughs> Green. <laughs> Bill, the trainer, getting the heck out of the way there. Give him a high five, Kate. There you go. When was the last time <laughs> Bill Green moved that fast? <laughs> high school. <laughs> Man. Good play there by the <laughs> he, he pulled a hammy. Yeah. He pulled a hammy. <laughs> No, there's a lot of confusion by West Florida. They're going to let him sub the whole defensive line. I don't know if West Georgia subbed or not, but they're going to let him off. Apparently, we subbed, and they okay. do get a chance to sub. Ten seconds on the play clock. Frost looking all the time, and T. Cole came up, called it. 30, 25, 20, and he slides down at the... 21 yard line. At least he got the first down, but great job by T. Cole corralling that, getting the first down for the Wolves. Unsure hey, as the slide. He could teach Ozzy Albies how to slide, <laughs> yeah. that's for sure. First and, uh, first and 10, West Georgia ball at the 21 yard line. That slide though, cost us another three or four yards. Yeah, that's where you just lower your shoulder and get a dive forward and get a few more. Three receivers to the right, one to the left. Frost rolling to the right. He has nobody so far. He's going to take it off and run at the 15-yard line. Harrison Frost showing his athleticism up to the 16-yard line. Quarterbacks are athletes, too. They can run a little bit. That's right. Not something we see a lot from Harrison Frost, but had no one open down the field. A great job of just picking up five yards there. I'd like to see more of that from him. Just no one open, tuck it and run, get some positive yards on first down. And they are rotating the D linemen four at a time. That's pretty impressive to be able yeah. to do that. We'll hand it. Jackson Carson up the middle. Get across the 15, down to the 14, maybe the 13. It's four down territory. Third down and three with 8.20 to go in the fourth quarter. Argos lead 35-21. If I'm Coach Dean, I think he's going to call an RPO here and see if they suck up on this play action fake. A lot of people in the box will bring LP in motion to the left. Third and three. Carson run right side and just couldn't get a block out there. He may have got a yard. If that, it'll be fourth and a long two, Willie. And a must get right here to stay in this ball game. We'll bring in uh, Ian Hinkle. The tight end. I think you got to go with Jackson with this play. 
We'll run yeah. it up the middle. Carson to the 10. Carson back to the nine. First down, West Georgia. They say the ball is out. I think they're going to say he's down. Huh, thankfully, the line judge said he was down. I don't know if he was down or not, Willie, but the line judge says we were down. So it is what the official says. Cade, what do you what do you see? Did you see he was down? I just saw the line judge signal that it's still our ball first down. There we go. All right, first down. He he wasn't down. It, it squeaked out. Oh. So Kyrie Jones, I think, came out of the pile with the football. So let's see if we can help out. Who forced the fumble? Oh, yeah. It was number nine for the stat people next door. Number nine, Kelvin Johnson forced the fumble, and Kyrie Jones recovered it for us at the eight-yard line. So nice job to punch it out by their linebacker. High snap handle. We give it to Carson. Makes a man miss at the six, up to the five, and that's where it will be. Right at the five-yard line, second to goal. Clock goes tick, 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 tick. Seven minutes to go, fourth quarter. Wolves running out of time. Still have some bullets left in the gun. Hopefully we shoot them off here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, he had the – it's easy for me to sit up here and tell him what he should have done. He had the cut back for six right there, yeah. but he's done a great job all night. But they over-pursued West Florida's defense, and he had it. We're currently on a 10-play, 74-yard drive. High snap, handle, Frost looking to throw. Complete to Mason Yost at the four. And it's going to be short, obviously, this goal to go. It's fourth, uh, it's third down and goal from the th three and a half yard line. A lot of clock running, 6 12 to go, fourth quarter. Yeah, it gets tight in here when you're inside the five yard line. We, this is something they work on on Wednesday and Thursday at practice, some of these goal line plays. It gets tight. They're running another man on late. 12 seconds on the play clock. Game clock at 5.50. We'll throw the pick route. He threw it short and right. Incomplete intended for LaPerion Perry. And it's fourth and goal. Got to put it in the end zone on this play. Yeah, this might be your ball game right here. They've got to get six points on this drive with about five minutes and 45 seconds left. Let's see what Coach Dean dials up. He might even want to take extra time. Nope. Bringing in. They Tate sub Huff. for every single one of our plays. They have a sub package for it. 10 seconds on the play clock. Tay Huff to the left. Five seconds on the play clock. Two receivers each side. Two, one, Frost. Man, there, Steven Peterson intercepted West Florida, but we're going to have pass interference. And he spiked the ball. There that you is go. A flag. There you My go. My goodness. You can't spike the football. This ain't the NFL. So we're going to have two penalties, P.I., defensive pass interference, and then he decided to slam the ball. Be surprised to see him back in anytime. <laughs> He's walking My over. My goodness. They're subbing him out. He's going over to the sideline. He can go back on over. <laughs> Wolves catch a break. I don't know how much P.I. there was on that play, but nonetheless, we'll see a replay on the UWG Productions Instant replay, good pick up by the offensive line. Ooh. Yeah, he had his, he had he had his, his arm wrapped he around his, his waist. Yeah, he had <laughs> his off arm wrapped around the waist. You're right. Let's see what the white, hall is gonna, white hat's going to call here. There are two fouls on the play. One live ball, one dead ball. Holding defense number eight. That'll be half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct. Defense number eight. Another half the distance. It will be first down. That's number eight. First, unsportsmanlike conduct. I'm surprised the ball's not on the half the half yard line with all of that, but it looks like it's on the two. Got to punch it in here. Go with their hot hand, Jackson. Hand it to him. Let's get this in the end zone. Yeah. West Florida gifts us with two big penalties, and now we'll have it first and goal from the one. It's half the distance from the four, which is the two. And then half the, and distance, half the distance from the, from the two, two is, is the, the one. one. So the ball should be on the one That's yard That's a lot line. of math for me, Matt. <laughs> Probably Cade as well. 
Receiver to each side, one tight end on each side of the line. We'll bring Jackson Carson in, take the snap, give the Carson up the middle, over the top, Jackson Carson, touchdown. Love it. He can My goodness. He can jump cut, he can lower his shoulder, he can go vertical. Jackson Carson is just a full package running back for the Wolves. Great job of finding a way to get in the end zone. Big drive. Seven point game. We've got to make the PAT, but yeah. th they needed a drive, and again, they answered for the offense. Let's see if the defense can come out and force a turnover and make a big play here. 13 play, 79 yard drive for the Wolves. It's big time. Skinner will snap it. Pate Hogan will hold it. Brock Pellegrino will kick it. Let's see what we can do. Little low snap, handled by Pate Hogan perfectly. Kick is up, it looks good because it is good. Pellegrino puts it through. Timeout on the field. What a drive by the Wolves to answer and give us a chance in this ball game. That's all you can ask for is a chance. Timeout on the field, 5.39 to go fourth quarter. 35-28, Wolves lead the Argos on UWG Productions and KISS 102.7. I'm not looking for a college to help me find myself. I'm looking for a college to help me be myself. A place to ignite my passion and fire my imagination. I'm looking for a place that will open new horizons for me. I want a place that will fuel me and put me on the track to the career of my dreams. A place that will spark my curiosity and satisfy my hunger for ideas. A place that will challenge me to the fullest, that will guide me and that will inspire me. I want to be around people who will support me Appreciate me for who I am and embrace me as I start my journey. I want a place that will give me the tools that I need to succeed in the career that I choose. I'm going to college at a place that will prepare me to win. I'm ready to make a difference. I know what I want. I know where I'm going. I'm ready to launch the me that I can be. And I am West. This is the University of West Georgia. Back at it here at University Stadium in Rayland Field, 35-28. West Georgia answers on offense again. They've done that a couple of times tonight. A 13-play, 79-yard drive, five minutes off the clock, capped off by Jackson Carson, two-yard run, who's having a great night offensively for the Wolves, running the ball. 31 carries, 148 yards, and three touchdowns. Willie, we've run 84 plays. We got a search going to see if it's a school record and we kick it out of bounds. We try to pooch kick. It, kick. Pooch it was kick a pooch kick that was not executed very well. I'd make him kick it again, to be honest. By Brock, kicks it out of bounds in the air. Might try to put it at the 35, right? That's right, 35? Yeah. And of course, we'll see what this ref has to say first. There are two fouls on the play. Offside, kicking team. That penalty will be declined. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team, the ball will be spotted at the 35. First down. So West Florida will get the ball at the 35 yard line. As you know, people, nobody, the home team has never won. So we're trying to make a little bit of history ourselves. We ran 90 plays against Florida Tech in 2017, Willie. You were a part of that. I was, yeah. We, we might Are break that tonight. Are we about to tonight. break? Oh, is that yeah. a record? Wow. Uh, yeah, we might. 
They'll run it up the middle, spin back inside. They're running back Shamari Mason, who hasn't played a lot. He's the starter, hasn't got that much, and he'll get about three yards. Do we win that game? I think we won that game. 2017 yeah. versus Florida Tech, yeah, with Jack Kyron Young making the last minute pick to seal the deal. That was always a dogfight when you went down to Florida Tech. Don't Melbourne. know if that was the school record we're checking, but that was the last time we had 90 plays in a game. Gotcha, gotcha. So, we can't confirm that. Yet. I remember I was tired <laughs> after that game. Yeah. It's second and six, ball on the 39 yard line, five minutes to go. Play clock at eight. They're going to milk it as much as they can, and they're going to run it, I'm sure. They'll run it to Shamari Mason, left side near a first down marker, and they got a first down to the 45 yard line. And don't do anything that we don't want to happen. Yeah, we don't want to give them any yards. No, we don't. Again, that left side carrying the load for West or West Florida's offense, man. That's that's their go-to, the bread and butter, left side run. First down and ten, now West Florida. First and ten, ball at their own 45-yard line. Wolves got to find a way to get off the field. They need a big play, big time play by one of our special players. Let's see if we can't dial something up right here. Shamari Mason is the running back. A lot of confusion. They're bringing it in tight now. A lot of miscommunication. Now they send a receiver out. They'll fake it. They're going to run the quarterback sweeper, and he's out in about 40, 35, and slides down at the 31-yard line. And actually say he started his slide at the 33-yard line. Generous spot, but good play. They brought the right tackle and the right guard on a pull to the left side, and the quarterback just followed right behind those linemen for a big game for West Florida. So clock will continue to run. 20 seconds on the, on the play clock, 3.56 on the game clock. Wolves trail by seven. Two receivers right, one to the left. Mason, the running back, behind his big quarterback, Byron Jarrett. Pee Wee Jarrett, as they call him. There's nothing little about him. No. They'll hand it to Shamari Mason right side, and Marzavion Dix makes the tackle, but unfortunately it happened four yards down the field. Balls came out, and it was a little late. They say he was already down. Second down at the 29-yard line. Let's see if the ball was out there, Willie. Really. He's got a quick first step when he hits through the line. No, he's he's laying down. No, he's, he was yeah, out. he's laying down. Second down and six. Three minutes to go. Ten seconds on the play clock. When do you use a timeout? After this play, yeah. if they stop him for no yards, I think you spurn one. They'll run it up the middle again, Shamari Mason, and Amos Dawn throws him back for a gain of only one. It's going to be third and five. Yeah, Coach Dean burns the timeout Coach here. Coach Dean will burn a timeout with 2.44 to go. They do have a good kicker. We've seen Griffin timeout. Sarah. West Georgia. That's their first timeout of the half. We've seen Griffin Sarah and Caden Williams both kick field goals. Right now, we're looking at a... Ball currently being on the 28-yard line, looking around a 44, 45-yard field goal. Math, math, math. <laughs> yeah, 48-yard field goal. He had a uh, – Cade might be able to add to this, but he looked like he had pretty good range in pregame. But uh, he's big lefty. Or I think he's a right field, wide footer. Yeah. He, was, he was kicking in pregame from the center of the logo. Well, there you have it. <laughs> I was actually standing with Coach Andy Dyer, former Archer High School coach, watching him kick, and Coach Andy Dyer made the statement, now that's a kicker. <laughs> well, great. Well, hopefully we can back him on up to the, to the midfield logo and see what kind of range he has from back yeah. there. 2.44 to go. It might be four down tear. What do you think? If you trust him enough? I think if they if they get it to, yeah if they get it to fourth and two or one with their quarterback I would keep it in his hands but let's see if we can't stop him here for a well possible play of the of night so far they bring Durden in motion Durden will Jarrett will keep it Pee Wee Jarrett will get the first down ball at the 22 yard line first down just a simple quarterback follow play 
And first down, West Florida. Yeah, it's tough to stop. That's 245 running downhill, falling behind his pulling left guard and his running back in front, and that's just hard to stop. For West Georgia. So clock will continue to run. 20 seconds on the play clock. Got to try to punch it out right here as we take down under two minutes and 20 seconds. Jarrett, if the ball would not leave Jarrett's hands the rest of the night. No, I would not keep it in his hands. Jarrett sends David Durden in motion. He'll hand it to Shamari Mason right side, and Mason will go down a yard behind the line of scrimmage. Timeout called with a minute 58 left. So timeout after a loss of one. That's a, a negative play. Timeout. West Georgia. That's their second timeout of the half. Negative play for the Argonauts. We'll take it. With a minute 58 to go, we'll keep it here. 35 to 28, your score. And uh, look at that all 27 cam again. Yeah, we got a great following tonight on the radio, uh, yeah. Matt, from some special alumni, Thomas yeah. Lester, Jake Lund, Tyler Queens here, John Hurst, great Wolves who came in through the 15th and 19th class. Great yeah. to thank you all for tuning in tonight. Want to give a shout out uh, to all of our crew tonight. Carrington Barthwell is our producer. Alicia Lee is our technical director. Replay operator is Kai Morgan. Shemaya Pittman's our graphics and stats person tonight. Our camera, and oper our camera operators are Jordan, Nick, Tanya, and Jada, and Marvin. We got five cameras? That's crazy. Crazy good work. Zaniah Holmes is our audio author operator. Alex Bothwell is the stadio audio operator. Sal LaRocca is our content creator. Creator, director Corey Spates, and Matt Cash does great work here as our full-time staff production and broadcast engineers. Second and 11, quarterback run again out to the right. He's going to slide down at the 21-yard line. Jarrett, Pee Wee Jarrett, slides down with a minute 49 to go. And if the Wolves can force a time out, goal, West Georgia, that's their final time out of the half. The Wolves will look to uh, force a field goal try. And they get the ball back with about a minute left. We're going to take a look now at, ahead to the UWG upcoming schedule. Of course, next week we will be on the road at 1 o'clock in the afternoon for a start time against North Greenville up in Tigerville, South Carolina. We'll then follow with two straight home games between Valdosta State and Shorter. And then we'll be right back at Delta State on November the 5th at 3 p.m. for a big Gulf South Conference matchup there. I have a feeling it's going to be kind of cold out there. Does Delta get cold? Are you talking about North Greenville? No, Delta, like November the 5th. Surely it'll be. Will that be cold around cold. there? I have bad <laughs> memories from Delta. Last, <laughs> last time I played there, it was about 98 degrees, and there wasn't any ice in the water bottles, and it was just hot. <laughs> All right, big third and nine play here. Let's see what the Wolves can do. They're going to run it up the middle, back to the left, and he is going to walk into the end zone for a touchdown. Number five, Shamari Mason. On the carry Shamari the Mason touchdown. runs it in from 21 yards out. Guess what side? Left side of the line of scrimmage. Big hole there. Takes it for the, an Argonauts touchdown. Sealing the game for the West Florida Argonauts. It's a tough one there, Willie. Third and the two big backbreakers tonight. The third and 17 completion right here. Yeah, by Pee Wee. Great, good job by Pee Wee on that play. And, and the third and nine run right there. Yep. Got to get off the field on third down. Got to give credit to West Florida, man. They. What a kick. Oh, my gosh, yeah. what a kick. That went out of the stadium. It is good from Griffin Sarah. And with 1.42 to go fourth quarter, the Wolves trail the Argos 42 to 28. Oh, accidentally closed out our, our live stat link. Good thing I can 
just go back to the great UWGathletics.com where you can find all things you need to know West Georgia. I know this. Both teams came to play tonight. West Georgia's ran 84 plays for 382 yards of offense. West Florida, 57 plays for 437 yards. And they've had three turnovers. Yeah, and you know, the, yeah, the three turnovers. And we weren't just weren't able to do anything with those turnovers. West Georgia is just now 6 of 15 on third down in tonight's ball game. But a lot of balance and uh, 154 yards rushing from this Wolves offense and 228 yards passing. Yeah, it's tough to put your finger on where, you know, what's what's been the problem for the Wolves. They've done a pretty decent job on both sides of the of the ball. Just had some unlucky breaks with West Florida converting some big third downs when they needed it. And they're a good football team. You know, they came out and they match up really well on, with us. And it's been a tough opponent. End over end kick for Caden Williams will drive Ronnie Blackman back to the three yard line. Blackman switches hands with it and he'll be tackled in the open field by Nate Howard, the sophomore backup wide receiver. That'll keep the streak alive of this series with the opposing team now undefeated. It's crazy. Man. That's crazy. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. And when we go down to West Florida next year, down in Pensacola, we'll be playing on their campus. That's right. We're not playing at the Blue Wahoo Stadium. I enjoyed playing at the Blue Wahoo Stadium, except for my footballs getting into the <laughs> the bay every time we kicked a field goal. That was uh, that. I did not like that. Oh, they didn't have a kicking ball for you? No, they didn't. And we're gonna jump off sides here. Well, this is gonna be. Ball start, offense, number 72, five-yard penalty, first down. Game's not over yet, but if the Wolves do indeed drop this game, Willie, it's going to be a tough one to swallow. And as far as playoff hopes are concerned, you almost have to win out. Yeah, it'll, I mean, make, it'll make our road that much harder. You know, we've got a couple tough more GSC opponents coming up with North Greenville, Valdosta State, Shorter, and Delta State. So... We'll have to right the ship. Frost connects to LaPerion Perry at the 20, at the 25, the 30. He steps out of bounds at the 35, 36 yard line. Nice pitch and catch of 17 yards and a first down. It's good to see LP get involved in this game. He's been quiet this season to so far, and he's got a few receptions. And just get him acclimated to playing football again. Trips to the left, one to the right. Four-man rush for West Florida will run the same route. LP makes the catch, 12 yards, first down. Yeah, that was a backside route, one-on-one -on -one with LP and Harrison Frost being on the same page. That's actually an option route. He can do three different uh, types of routes. He can take it vertically, he can run a post, or he can run that out route. And good connection there from Harrison Frost to LP. We'll flip sides with LP. Terrell Cole, Steve Peterson out left. Tay Huff down to the right. Still three-man rush, now fourth man coming. Frost completes it to Tay Huff across the 40 to the 39-yard line. Another 12-yard pickup at a first down. West Georgia making some progress here. Yeah, Harrison Frost is taking advantage of this single receiver side. Hit us, Tay on a quick slant. Doesn't look like we were all the way set there before we snapped the football, yeah. Full start, offense, number 13, five-yard penalty, first down. And a false start on the Wolves will back us up. So clock will start as soon as they set the ball back down. So we got to be ready to snap it. 115 on the fourth quarter clock. We trail 42 to 28. Frost looking, deep shot across the middle. They tackled Steven Peterson, but they say it was on time. Good defensive play by Sherrod Oliver, who had the uh, the P.I. or hold in the end zone and the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on the last drive. Looked like it was right on the money. I don't know if that just snuck through Stevens' hands. Looked like it was a good throw from Harrison Frost. About second and 15 now. They'll bring a safety blitz. Good pick up by Carson. He'll step up and throw a little high intended for Tay Huff. And it's third and 15. 
Yeah, good job by Jackson to pick that blitz up. And Harrison, nice movement in the pocket, just a little high. Tay's not a big, big receiver. I think he's uh, about 5'8". Just fires a little high. Third down and 15. Ball on the 44-yard line. Trips to the left, one to the right. Same receiving group in there. Takes a snap. Frost will look. Connect to LP in and out of the hands. It was going to be well short of the first down. It was going to maybe go for a gain of three or four. And it's fourth and 15. Valasta State now up 23, make it 24 to 20 over West Alabama. Now we're going to jump off sides. LP had a little bit of a flinch there. This will make it fourth and 20. False start. Offense number five. Five yard penalty, still fourth down. Forty-two to twenty-eight, West Florida with the lead, and uh, we got to get it down to the twenty-nine-yard line to keep this game going and keep a chance. They'll bring four. Frost trying to buy enough time. He'll throw it as far as he can up to Laperion Perry. It's incomplete. And There's a flag. There is a flag. I'm assuming it's holding, right? Yeah, the White Hats motioning for decline. Holding. Offense number 72. That penalty's declined. Ball will go over on downs. So holding on Kyrie Jones, and that'll be your ball game. West Florida will take two knees and get out of here with a win. They have been pretty successful up here in Carrollton. Four wins and as many tries at University Stadium. Wolves showed a lot of fight. Wolves showed a lot of fight in this ball game. They did. They had some big offensive drives when they needed to answer, and we had the nice defensive plays early with the interception and the fumble recovery. Unfortunate that we were not able to get any points out of it, but just the Argonauts proved to be too much for the the Wolves tonight. Then we're going to take a look at West Florida's upcoming schedule here. Now, West Florida was shorter next week. Kickoff at 12 p.m., so they got to come right back up to Rome, Georgia. Yeah, and you then, wonder if you just stay. Well, <laughs> I guess you wouldn't, but. And then they got Mississippi College, West Al at home, and then at Valdosta on November the 5th. So two kneels, two kneel downs, and that'll do it. Final score here tonight, West Florida 42, West Georgia 28. So congratulations, West Florida. Nice win for, the, for these guys tonight. West Florida will have to get it back on the road next week in Tigerville, South Carolina. As we look for Coach uh, David Dean here shortly, I know Kate Perry and, and and company are going to be looking for him down on the sideline. I'm looking for Cade. Do you see Cade? Yeah, he's got him. Okay, go Cade. Go, go Cade. Coach, obviously a Gulf South Conference drag race, and we didn't come out in the end. No, we, we didn't. Uh, they they just made more plays than we did. We we let some plays get away, obviously, and. It's disappointing. I feel bad for our kids. You know, they played hard, and I'll say that they played hard all the way to the end. They just uh, we couldn't stop their run there at the end of the game. A lot of season left to play. How do you how do you go forward from here? Well, I've been in this situation before with two losses and, and been able to get in the playoffs. The same thing we had happened last year. So we, I mean, obviously we got to win out. Our, our backs are against the wall. Uh, we just got to regroup and, uh, and and make a push here in these last five games. All right, go Wolves. So tough one tonight. Thank you to Coach David Dean and Cade Perry. And final thoughts from you, Willie Candler. Well, I think Coach Dean says it best. You can make the playoffs with two, two losses. And yes, our backs up are against the wall, but we just got to reset and refocus and focus on North Greenville next week. Absolutely. Great work tonight by all of our crew with UWG Productions. Thank you to Chris Causey back in our KISS 102.7 studio. He did a great job tonight. And 
Uh, like I said, we'll be back at it on the road next week. Uh, kickoff time scheduled for 1 o'clock. Don't know what I'm going to do. You guys are out. So uh, I, I guess uh, we'll, we'll get uh, – we got a very special broadcast with us next week. We'll just put it, we'll <laughs> that, just put it that way. That's right. I'll be, I'll be taking some time off next week, but hopefully the Wolves can get a, get a W out in North Greenville. Our final, th our final score once again tonight, West Florida 42, West Georgia 28. For Willie Candler, for Cade Perrion, for Chris Calsey, for everybody back at our UWG production studio at the Coliseum. Thank you all for tuning in to West Georgia Wolves football. So long for University Stadium in Rayland Field. Have a great night, everybody.